following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. A first-time champion will be crowned today at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. As Sam Houston faces South Dakota State, the top seed Jackrabbits making their first trip to the title game. It's about a three-hour trip for the folks from Huntsville, Texas at Sam Houston. A lot further from Brookings, South Dakota, but they wouldn't miss this for the world as we welcome you to the 2021 FCS Championship Game. Sam Houston here for the first time since 2012 with zero titles. And South Dakota State here for the first time ever. Dave Pash with Andre Ware. Well, they moved the season from the fall to the spring, yet weather is still the biggest headline, Andre, going into this game. It's been pouring rain all day. Who has the advantage in this climate? Yeah, I've always felt like as an offensive player, the offense had the advantage. You know, as a receiver, that what depth to go to, to cut your route off, running backs know when to cut. The quarterback's gonna have a little more time today because of a wet surface, so the pass rush not that uh, not that important as, uh, as the game progresses. All right, let's talk about how each team got here. Let's start with Sam Houston. We did their game last week. They're down 17 with two minutes to go in the third. Five minutes later, they're up 11. They're explosive. Yeah, defensively, it's the defensive line. Jahari K, Trevor Williams, Zion McCollum on the back end. They've got talent on every single level of their defense. Then the playmakers on the offensive side. Ezer, Adeyi, Ramon Jefferson, they get it done as, as offensive support ca supporting cast. And then it's the quarterback, the guy that has led them here. Put him on his back, a dual threat. At that position, Eric Smith, the last two weeks, just took things on himself and willed his team to a victory. Sam Houston, as you talked about, has a veteran quarterback on the other side. South Dakota State as a true freshman trying to win a national championship. And they have an excellent run game as well. Yeah, they get it started just like Sam Houston on the defensive side. Caleb Saunders on the defensive line. Playmakers, Don Gardner in the back, on the back end. And then it's the running backs, the running game. Pierre Strong, Isaiah Davis, who can hit the home run. And the do-everything quarterback in the true freshman, Mark Gronkowski. Gronkowski, he has yet this postseason to turn the ball over through the air. This should be one heck of a matchup this afternoon. Man, it has been a long wait for these players, coaches, and fans, but the wait is over. The FCS National Championship game is next. Someone's getting a ring in Frisco. Welcome back to a very rainy Frisco, Texas for today's FCS National Championship game. Both head coaches today have a unique path to get to today's title game, starting first with Sam Houston. Casey Keeler will tell you he has a PhD in the postseason because he's been here so many times. Eight trips to the title game, but only one championship. That was back in 2003. He still wears his ring as a reminder just how hard it is to win it all. On the other side, John Stigelmeyer, 24 seasons at his alma mater. This is his first trip to the national championship. And Dave, so unique when we were talking to their coaching staff, they got emotional thinking what it would be like to win this for Coach Stig. 64 years old, goes back to his time as a student coach in 1977. So he's been a part of this program for 40 years. Sam Houston won the toss and deferred, so it will kick off from the 35. Wind is right to left. That'll be a factor with the rain. And here's Isaiah Davis running it out. He's got a lane across the 25-yard line and then finally wrapped up at the 37. South Dakota State, the number one seat despite a loss this season. Lost at North Dakota early in the year, but they hammered Delaware in the semifinals thanks to, thanks to Mark Gronowski, the true freshman quarterback. He's from Naperville, Illinois, just outside Chicago. He was named the starter before week one. Was a great athlete in high school, basketball, baseball, and of course football. Was the Offensive Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley Conference, freshman and newcomer of the year as well, and he caught a touchdown pass in the win against Delaware last week. He'll operate from the 36-yard line and keep it on first down. Out to the 40 for a gain of four yards. He does have seven rushing touchdowns on the season. You talk about Mark Gronowski and the word that comes to mind right away is poise. He doesn't play like a true freshman. He throws the football with 
with touch when it's needed, and he can certainly drill it. Under recruited, in my opinion, South Dakota State. When you watch the film on this young man, very, very impressive. Go out of the pistol here after a three yard run on first down. The air is strong, motioning out of the backfield. Gronowski facing a little pressure, dumps it off for a first down past midfield, and what a hit! Jackson Yonke runs over the defender at the 45 yard line, moving the chains into Sam Houston territory. Just kind of picking up where he left off last week, a little under route, dragging across the middle in zone coverage. But last week, he had a great game. Three catches, 64 yards, and a big touchdown catch to go along with it. They say, they tell us, the coaching staff, if Jackson has a good game, then Jaden usually has one the next week. It's been Jackson here early. Little trouble handling the pitch, and Pierre Strong is wrapped up in the backfield for a loss of about three. Isaiah Davis, the running back, brought down by Jahari Kay and Quentin Brown. Yeah, Kay, we mentioned him at the top. Just tremendous penetration. They lived in the backfield last, last week against James Madison, especially early in the game. They were up the field, causing running backs to reroute, harassing the quarterback. And it's led by that big guy there, number 55. He was a finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award, which goes to the top defensive player in FCS, first team All-America. That was a loss of four in the play, so it's second down and 14. Bronowski to the air, and now he's going to just take off here with a blocker in front. Runs over his offensive lineman, fumble the ball, but covered up at the 42-yard line by Zach Hines, the tight end. We're going to see a lot of that today. It's raining harder now than it has all day long. And just trying to get back to a manageable situation on third down. The ball's coming out there, and luckily for South Dakota State, they had a player in the area. I thought he was down, but didn't matter because uh, Hines recovered it. Third down and seven here at the 42-yard line. And this is where you got to defend all 11 because of the threat of Gronowski running the football. Pressure up the middle. It's a screen, and it's incomplete through the hands of the tight end, Tucker Kraft. That was set up. That was really well executed as Gronowski is hobbling off the field. We'll keep an eye on that, but it's fourth down. He does not look like that's one that you shake off right away, but trying to set up a screen play to take advantage of an aggressive pass rush. And just a little over the outstretched hands of Tucker Kraft, who I really, really like. Boy, was there any contact on that? Sometimes those are the scarier injuries. It was hard to tell if there was a defender that actually made contact that time. Or wet, the wet surface in maybe an ankle. And the punt's going to sail into the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. It will come out to the 20 for Sam Houston. Eric Schmidt, junior quarterback from the Woodlands, Texas. Played for his dad in high school. He's got eight rushing touchdowns, 17 passing touchdowns, and two rushing scores in the win against James Madison in the semifinals last week. Was the player of the year in the Southland Conference. Game-winning rushing touchdown in the quarterfinals. He can spin it, but he certainly has made more plays here in the postseason with his feet. And unlike Mark Gronowski, very poised, coach's son, as you mentioned, very even keel. Keeps this, this offensive unit just playing and, and humming. Play action here, Schmidt in trouble, taking a shot, got a receiver. Ball was underthrown, incomplete. And a good job by Joshua Manchigaya not to interfere with a day who was open, but the ball was underthrown. Well, yeah, this is exactly what we talked about at the top, where guys slip. You know where you're going as a receiver, and if that one's thrown out in front of a day a little bit earlier, then that's a touchdown. But he couldn't set his feet because he was being harassed by Reese Winkleman, the defensive end. Second down and ten. Here's. Schmidt keeping it, got a lane off the left side, first down, and tripped up, pushed out at the 37-yard line by Don Gardner, so it's a gain of 17 and a first down. Yeah, keep an eye on this all throughout the ball game, the ability for both quarterbacks to make plays with their legs. You get guys out of position, they're athletic enough, fast enough, 
to accelerate and make big plays in the running game. Sam Houston 9 0 in the season. The number two seed. Jefferson gets the carry here. Past the 40, grabbed at the pants and brought down after a game of six of the 43 by Preston Tetzloff, captain, senior linebacker from Brookings, South Dakota. Nice, nice patient run by Jefferson, letting his tight end Dalton Meyer get out in front and then the acceleration. This is a nice drive being put together, trying to reward the defense, Dave, for a stop. This is a nice drive to kind of get you out of your own, own end of the field. On a day like today with the weather and the wind, field position so important. Second down and four here. Staying out of second and third long, important as well to go out of the pistol here. Huge hole off the right side. Jefferson got the first down easily. Boy, contact was made after he got the first down. Brought down by Michael Griffin, and they're already at midfield. You got to keep an eye on that motion. Ezard coming in motion, and he's showing it to Ramon Jefferson. That's a play where, he, where Schmidt could easily pull it from Jefferson and spin it outside. If he out leverages the defense, it's going to be a pull and a quick toss to Ezard, and we know exactly what he could do in the open field. Yeah, if you're South Dakota State, you always got to worry about where Ezard is. Touchdown reception last week and a punt return for a touchdown. He, there was some movement there by Ezard on the far side of the field. Looked like he came out of his stance. Ball start. Number 12, Sam Houston. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. That's the, those are the penalties, the pre snap penalties on an offense that will drive a coach crazy. You got everything humming, and then it's a receiver that jumps. All you got to do is get out there, get lined up, and look back inside. You're not trying to time a snap. Just see when the ball is snapped, and then you're into your route or you're blocking or whatever. There is really never an excuse for a receiver to jump. You saw Casey Keeler there, the head coach. He is tied with Jim Trussell for the most playoff wins in FCS history. Can win a second championship if they win this one. Bad snap and recovered by the defense. Schmidt could not come down with it. South Dakota State does. Tolu Ogrindi with the fumble recovery at the 41 yard line. We knew ball security would be an issue. It's been a big one early. So the young man that got South Dakota State here may not be available. Mark Gronowski injured the true freshman quarterback, player of the year in their conference, Keaton Heidi, a sophomore who threw just two passes all season, is in the game. This is the play prior to we saw him hobbling off. Watch him get tackled here. Just looked as though a defender may have fallen into the back side of his knee as he was going down. And this is a pass play on a jet sweep. Yankee inside the 35 and down to the 32 for a gain of nine. But we saw Gronowski hobble off after the next play when it didn't look like there was any contact. So you've got a sophomore from Minnesota, Heidi, who's thrown just two passes. As we talked about, Gronowski was named the starter right before camp. But there were a couple other guys that were in the mix, and Heidi wasn't really considered one of them. And this is where we last saw Gronowski. Chris Budden just told us during the break that he's still in the tent. But a gain of nine on the first pass play, even though it was an easy one. Now a pitch to Strong running for the first down. Past the 25 and inside the 23. Strong is a thousand yard rusher twice in his career. With fewer games this year, he didn't get there, but still averaged about 80 yards a game. Yeah, and about five and a half yards per carry. And this is where they're going to rely on. This is exactly what they're going to do. Pierre Strong and Isaiah Davis, that strong running game that averages about 230 yards per game. You've got your starting quarterback sitting on the bench. Uh, let's turn around, hand the football off, and see if this big offensive line can move some body. That was such a big part of the game, even with Kornowski, but more pronounced now. They're going to throw it here. Heidi with the pocket breaking down takes off. 
and gets upended at the 22-yard line by Trevor Williams, who lost his helmet. He's going to have to go to the sideline for a play. Heidi's got to be careful. You yeah. can't have him go down. Yeah, T. Willie on, the, on that second level of the defense led the team in tackles with 79 coming in. Had a great game last week where he had 12 tackles in that matchup against James Madison, but you're right. Heidi's got to protect himself. Made of a couple, second down and eight. Trevor Williams, former walk-on, their leading tackler and captain out for at least this play as they reset the helmet. Something quick here. Going to be a handoff to Davis. Breaks a tackle inside the 15, inside the five, heading for the pylon. And out of bounds at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for South Dakota State. Davis is the home run hitter. Pierre Strong is between the tackles for the complete back. They're trying to go up tempo here, Andre. So Sam Houston can't substitute and get the goal line defense on the field. Davis again pushing forward and in. Touchdown, South Dakota State strikes first in the championship game. You just can't make mistakes against South Dakota State. Plus seven in turnover margin. They will turn you over and they take full advantage when they do it. So the backup quarterback comes in after the takeaway, leads the team on a five play 41 yard drive in two minutes and 15 seconds. Davis gets his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. And that Cole Fromm, we saw him slipping a couple times on kicks on this wet field in pregame. So they don't, I'm not sure they have enough on the field. Correct, only 10, and that's why you see Davis, well, maybe they had 11. Now Davis is called off. It's still 10. Take. Yeah, have to burn a timeout there, and then you see Tucker Kraft run out at the last second. Unless this is something that's being reviewed upstairs, that could be the only thing that saves South Dakota State here from having to burn a timeout, but I don't think that was the case. Delay a game, South Dakota State, five-yard penalty, it will remain the try. Are you okay with that? I mean, yeah, I, I am because you, you, uh, you save the timeout. It's not a, a very long convert for a guy like uh, Cole Fromm. I'm not sure. You want to make things any more difficult in the kicking game today with a wet field, wet ball, <laughs> constant rain. I mean, it is the first half. You never want to burn a timeout. Yeah, and like we that, saw him go down, warm yeah. it up in, uh, in pregame. Yep, slipped a couple times in pregame. Keep an eye on the snap here as well. From Thomas Motzko, it's pretty good. And the kick is a line drive, but it's good. And it's 7 0. So South Dakota State on the board first. They did everything they could to get Isaiah Davis down, including rip his jersey, but he hits Pater nonetheless. So on the left, you see Mark Gronowski, their starter with his helmet on. He got hurt earlier. Let's get the latest from Chris Budden. Well, when he came out of the medical tent, he tried running up and down, seemed like he was okay. You can tell it's the left knee that has been bothering him. He got on the bike, but just a minute ago, took a football, tried to throw, took one throw, and then couldn't go any further. That's when he started talking to the coaching staff. Well, we saw, uh, as you look at this here, oh yeah, that's not good. And, and we saw a couple players go up to Heidi, including Gronowski, and pat yeah. him on the back, which usually is an indication like, go get him, you're up. We'll see, next time they get the football, it's gonna be a touchback here for Sam Houston. Yeah, and he, you, sometimes you have to protect players from themselves because it's a national championship game. He wants back in, he's gonna do everything he possibly can until you see a sight like that where he's trying to throw it as Chris described and just couldn't do it. You gotta protect him from himself and, and go ahead and, uh, and go with a backup in this situation. Uh, it'd be such a, a shame for him if he can't come back, just given how Important he's been to this incredible run by South Dakota State, making it to its first ever national championship game. They have a 7 0 lead, though. Sam Houston turned it over on the last possession. Bearcats start on their 25. 
And a short throw here to drop Crest. Had it go right through his hands. Normally sure-handed receiver caught 40 balls on the year, but not that time. Yeah, and those 40 balls led the team. He's usually extremely reliable. He is the guy they go to. They love him on third downs. Excellent route runner. And just, you see the, hit, the eyes. Just enough to where he couldn't reel it in. On second and 10, he'll keep it on the ground. Schmidt finds a lane, dragged down at the 33 by Adam Bach, the third and two. The NCAA championship coverage continues today with the men's lacrosse first round at 5 o'clock Eastern and 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. For more, go to NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Dave Pash, Andre Ward, Chris Button, just north of Dallas in Frisco. About 50% attendance here at Toyota Stadium, so about 8,000 people for the FCS championship game. Third down and two. Schmidt moving to his left, his pass off target, and then a huge hit. Gales lighting up the receiver, Adei. And it's fourth down, and they'll have to punt. And Gales is the other corner opposite Ton Gardner. But here, you get a running start. Receiver's not, unable to locate you. He can't protect himself. And he's just separating the receiver from the football in, a, in an ugly way. What a big hit. Matt McRobert will punt it to Jackson Yonke, who's back at his 22-yard line. Rain not as heavy as it was earlier, but still coming down here in Frisco. And that goes through the hands of McRobert. He dives on it, but it'll be North Dakota State ball inside the 20-yard line. Second big mistake by the Bearcats here in the first eight minutes. And lucky to have gotten the football back. I mean, he was struggling for a minute to just reel it in and give his defense a chance without South Dakota State picking that up and maybe getting it into the end zone. Well, boy, Sam Houston has had all kinds of issues on special teams. Starting in a bad way against North Dakota State, they had a block punt. They gave up two returns for touchdowns in that game alone. But then next week against James Madison, they had a punt return for a touchdown. They blocked a punt. And they recovered a muffed kickoff as well. So what you're saying is this is the, the other week that, that's happening right now to Sam Houston. Just like the quarters so far, Mess and the Elements playing a big role. Off the left edge, it's Pierre Strong for not much, maybe a yard. It'll bring up second down and long with Keaton Heidi, the backup quarterback, still in the game. Sophomore threw one pass on that first drive, threw two all season long. I feel like he could play just about anywhere in the country. That talented out of Little Rock, Arkansas. And how do you get to South Dakota State? Well, their running backs coach, John Johnson, who is an excellent recruiter, found him there and got him to got him to campus, and he has been a pleasant find. Finals for the Walter Payton Award. Second down and 10. Heidi keeping it here, being chased and throwing it in the dirt, incomplete. All right, let's get the update on Gronowski from Chris. All right, we'll try to get uh, Chris's uh, mic working, but we're told it's not good news with regard to Gronowski returning to this game. Third down and 10. This is big right here for Sam Houston to try to stop the bleeding here, down 7 nothing, and everything going wrong for them. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, with a, with a screen, something too, uh, too strong to get him involved and maybe pick up, just make, get it to fourth and short. And it will be just a straight handoff here, and Strong is bottled up after a gain of a couple, so it'll be fourth down. They'll bring on the kicking team. Going to take advantage, try to nail some points here early. Respect a lot of coaches that, you know, you're, you're in a championship game, conditions the way they are, all points matter at this point in the ball game. Be a 34 yard attempt from the far hash mark. It's 
Snap is bad. Ball's on the ground. Picked up by Fromm and taken down at the 30-yard line. Good. Form tackled by Isaiah Downs coming off the edge and disrupting things. Snap is the problem. Isaiah Downs right there to make one heck of an effort for Sam Houston. Sam Houston has been able to overcome miscues in other games. We'll see what happens in this one. This was the last of the first possession on the bad snap to the quarterback. Then the punter had trouble with it. So North or South Dakota State gets the ball inside the 30-yard line, but then it has issues in the kicking game, trying to snap it for a short field goal. And so it's still 7-0 South Dakota State. Ramon Jefferson running here, nowhere to go. Maybe a yard, tripped up at the point of attack by Hicks. John, kind of put a bow on what you were talking about, able to, to hold South Dakota State to no points because of that bobble snap. And it was actually Braden Clopton who was a, who made the play in a, a great form tackle. Now we have a South Dakota State defender down. It's Xavier Ward, senior nose tackle from Freeman, South Dakota, who's shaken up on the play. We saw the quarterback for South Dakota State injured earlier. Watch 91 in blue here. Friendly fire got hit by his teammate that time, Dyshawn Gales. When they speak highly of Xavier Award, both he and Caleb Sanders are kind of what make this defensive front go excellent in the run game or defending the run, and they. They get up the field and pass rush as well. Good to see him up and moving around. Yep, no doubt. 24 players on this roster from South Dakota. A lot of Jackrabbit fans made the trip here from Brookings all the way to Frisco. They had a little fun last night, didn't they? Here Schmidt keeping it, trying to get the edge. He does at the 30 and scoots out of bounds. As the first down at the 35-yard line. Kept you awake, South Dakota State fans <laughs> are in the same hotel with us. Kept Dave Pash up last night. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I was the only one. I think anybody that was on my side of the hotel was hearing all the, uh, the South Dakota State fans. But hey, why not celebrate? They're here for the first time. It's been such a trying year. They thought they were going to play football in the fall. They didn't get a chance to play football in the fall. It's postponed to the spring. Why not celebrate? Mid in trouble, down he goes at the 32-yard line, sacked by Reese Winkleman, who had two and a half sacks in the semifinal win against Delaware. Both he and Quentin Hicks arrive about the same time, just kind of pressuring from the edges, and then it just all collapses inside on Eric Schmidt. You'll see here, just a nice up and under move, and both guys, both defensive ends arriving about the same time. Gonna share a sack. So second down and 12. Seven sacks and 12 tackles for a loss for South Dakota State in the semis. Here's Ezra, his first touch. Mm. Looking to make moves, but he fumbled the ball. It just happened to bounce right back up to him. And he gets more yardage to the 42. So a gain of 10 on the play, but another ball on the ground. Boy, this, is, this guy's just a play and a highlight waiting to happen. They're just trying to make a defender miss, and it's their leading tackler, Logan Backus who's out in space, a sideline to sideline linebacker, making a play on Jaquiz Ezra. But he can hit the home run. Big third down here for Sam Houston, trying to get some momentum. And they're going to use their quarterback, and he's taken down short of the line to gain. It was Hicks that made the play. Does Sam Houston have a decision here? They yes. already had an issue last time they tried to punt. Do you go for it? I think he's going to be tempted to go for it because of the way that, that they've been gobbling yards up on the ground, especially with, with Ramon Jefferson. Kind of surprised they didn't go back to him there on third and short. But I wouldn't hesitate if I'm here knowing that the job the defense did earlier after the bobble snap. See if they try to draw him offside, perhaps. 
that's what they're going to do. It didn't work, so they burn a timeout. I kind of liked the idea of going for it because of all the issues mm -hmm. we've seen so far with putting the ball on the ground. I mean, we've had three fumbles so far, one lost by Sam Houston. And one trying to punt the football away. So there's no guarantee that you get that, that all synced up and, and working. It's like spread everybody out, bring Jefferson back to the backfield, and give him an RPO. It looks like they're gonna try to punt it away here. Noah Caldwell is the long snapper. Matt McRobert. I don't, know, I don't know if he didn't see the ball when he tried to catch it on the last snap. Meanwhile, South Dakota State does not have anybody deep, so see if they come after this or they're just expecting a fake. McRobert gets a hold of this one and gets rid of the kick. It takes a Sam Houston hop. Will it die? It was initially touched right at the one yard line. And now they're saying a touchback, so it'll come out to the 20. It was trying to put the brakes on, which would have turned out to be a, a great decision by Casey Keeler, the head coach at Sam Houston. Ever so close. But either way, they flipped the field. I mean, South yes. Dakota State's been living in Sam Houston territory here in the first quarter until now. Oh, but if that was down inside the one, oh, yeah. you're talking about bringing, bringing the heat. But a game of miscues and injuries. Keaton Heidi, a sophomore, is in the game at quarterback, barely played this year, but Mark Gronowski, the starter and player of the year in the conference, true freshman quarterback, he got hurt. On the first possession, they're going to run it here on first down strong across the 25 and out to the 27. Good gain there, seven yards. Let's check in with Chris. Dave Gronowski's day is done. He was not able to continue throwing. Coach Stig went up to him, gave him a big hug, put on a headset. He's going to stay out here and help coach instead of spending the rest of the day in the locker room. You know, here's the other thing, too. If this is an injury that right. is severe, They've got to turn around and play football in three months. I and mean, this is one of the problems with having spring football and then a fall season is what happens to guys that get injured this late in the year. Yeah, you hope it's it's not as severe as it looks, but not being able to put any weight on it to throw does not look good. Here's a tight end screen and the ball's dropped. We've seen that happen a couple times now. Tucker Kraft can't hang on to it. It's his second drop, third down. Here's the injury to Gronowski on that first possession. We think possibly here, if you look at the left, leg here, he gets twisted, and then on the next play, no contact, and immediately starts to hobble. And that's when you couldn't put, couldn't put any pressure on it, but Eden Heidi, he started games before. 2019, he started five games, played in seven after an injury to Gibbs, Devory Gibbs. So he's got some experience under center. Rain picking up here, third down and three, and there was movement, looked like the running back Started forward before the snap, Isaiah Davis. It's going to complicate things here on third down. And Sam Houston looking, as you mentioned, looking to take advantage over that, over flipping the field position. South Dakota State, the number one seed, hammered Delaware to get here. They were picked third preseason in their own conference behind North Dakota State and Northern Iowa as Joe Wallace takes a shot at Keaton Heidi. No flag was thrown there. I'm shocked that there was no flag thrown. Third down and eight after the penalty. Movement on the left side of the line now by South Dakota State. So now what you've done, Dave, and two Two pre-snap penalties. You've gone from really having to face up and force the quarterback. Number 71, five-yard penalty remains third down. To get the ball out quickly to now you can just play zone defense, keep everything in front of you, rally up, make a tackle, and force a punt here. Get Just get into fourth down. Third and 13, you don't want to make a mistake defensively yourself and give an automatic first down, but now you can just play zone and keep everything in front of you. The turnovers and the drops, you could account on the weather for that and blame the weather, but not on false starts. 
Another screen pass. Yonkies tackled immediately. Trevor Williams was right there after the catch to bring him down shy of the 20-yard line. And with the rain coming down hard again, South Dakota will have to, uh, South Dakota State will have to punt from around its five-yard line. Trevor Williams, not a big guy at 5'9", 205, but boy, does he play big. Knowledgeable in their system, recognizes the play, and what a finisher he is. Jaquez Ezzard is deep, and this is a situation you just want to get rid of it if you're the punter, but you don't want to kick it to Ezzard. He's got two 80-yard punt returns for touchdowns. Movement again by South Dakota State, another penalty flag. Number 35, offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Chase Norblade, the guilty man, so now they back it up to the 12-yard line. So again, if you're the punter, you're just thinking, catch it, get rid of it. But I don't want to kick it to this guy, no, Ezzard. I don't want to kick it to him, but if I'm South Sam Houston, this close to the goal line, I'm going after this baby. You don't want to, you want, don't want to rough the the, uh, the punter here, but I'm going to get this one. They don't dinkle with a pretty good punt, but right punt. at Ezzard, here he goes. Across the 45, breaks free at the 40, right on cue, inside the 20, heading for the pylon. He's in again, touchdown Ezzard. Penalty flag is down though, back at midfield. Might this come back? What a weapon Ezzard has been this year. But I think it's coming back after a 63 yard punt return for a touchdown. He had an 80 yarder last week. Illegal block in the back, number 50 of the return team. That'll be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. The period will be extended for one on time down. Cedo Mascoro gets called for the penalty that wipes out what would have been the game tying touchdown. Right there, you saw it there, yep. And I don't know that he needed to do it. I agree with you. Just put your hands up and let him run by because he's going so fast by Ezard. Ezard's already into his move to get up the field. So South Dakota State catches a big break there because of the penalty. And this is how Sam Houston has been able to get momentum with its return game and Jacquez Ezzard. Get him rested and right back in the game. So we have an untimed down here because of the penalty. And they had issues with a snap, all kinds of movement. Down, Gotta wonder how much of this is nerves for both teams. False start, offense, number 76, five yard penalty, first down. It's a great point, it's a great point, but by now in a game, you figure all of that would have just kind of taken care of itself. You've already, you know, bump pads and everybody's gotten adjusted. It's a little late in the game, late, late in the uh, first half for, for nerves to still be Kind of showing themselves. First time for South Dakota State in the championship game. First time for Sam Houston since 2012 when it lost to North Dakota State, which, by the way, had won three straight, eight of the last nine, before getting knocked out of the 2021 postseason. So another untimed situation, first and 15. Schmidt gets rid of the pass. It's juggled and then secured at the 46-yard line by Chandler Harvin. Even receptions are adventurous here in the first quarter. All kinds of issues handling the football. And South Dakota State has the lead after one. Seven nothing Jackrabbits. Crazy first quarter here in the FCS Championship game in Frisco, Texas between South Dakota State and Sam Houston. It's seven nothing Jackrabbits. This is what happened in the first quarter. He had a punt return for a touchdown called back for Sam Houston, which would have tied the game. The starting quarterback for South Dakota State gets hurt on the first drive. And they had a takeaway, and then there also was a bad snap on a punt by Sam Houston. But that did not lead to points for South Dakota State. And Sam Houston with some pretty good field position here to, to get things started. Eric Smith, that the story offensively has been his legs in the first quarter. He has eight rushing touchdowns on the season. Jefferson gets the carry. He gets smacked at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, so it's going to bring up third down as Crockett Krolikowski was in there to make the hit. 
Adam Bach also. Similar to these two teams, both get it done with deep, great defensive lines. They've got playmakers on every single level of their defenses, and then playmakers spread around the quarterback with solid offensive line. It's no, no uh, mistake that number one meets number two in the national championship game. Schmid will throw it, gets drilled as he gets rid of the pass. It's underthrown and incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Schmid slow to get up. Thomas Stacker right in his grill. And I'll tell you what, he really couldn't get a handle on the football. Lucky to just get that one out. And they rotate about eight to ten defensive linemen. Stacker. He'll get some time. Caden Johnson will get some time. They, they move guys around just to keep them fresh, and then they get the starters getting after you in the fourth quarter. Matt McRobert called his name a bunch today. Gets rid of this punt as South Dakota State was bearing down on him. Yankee lets this one roll inside the 10. And will be downed at the five-yard line. This week's Sunday night baseball game, the series finale between Yadier Molina and the Cardinals and the Padres. Coverage starts 6 o'clock ESPN and the ESPN app with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. With Andre Ware, Chris Budden, Dave Pash in Frisco. South Dakota State up 7-0, but the Jackrabbits are backed up, and their backup quarterback in for the rest of the game, as Chris Budden reported earlier, Mark Gronowski, the true freshman, Offensive Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley Conference. Starting quarterback for South Dakota State, done for the day. This is where you would like to see Sam Houston really get after it. He's talked about that talented defensive line. Going to make some plays here. Going to throw from his end zone. Heidi in trouble and almost threw a pick. Boy, into traffic. The closest player to that ball was Jalen Thomas, a defensive back for Sam Houston as they had Heidi throw it from his goal line. They've got to find a way to get him some easy completions to, to just build his confidence. Right now, it's just one side of the field and let it rip. Tremendous amount of pressure on that last, last play by Quentin Brown. Q, who is a little delayed blitz by, by Sam Houston. They'll run it here on second down. Big hit at the line of scrimmage by Clopton. Clopton got run over in the first quarter, but that did not deter him. He has come back and leveled a couple of ball carriers, third down and long. Well, he made friends with Fromm earlier. I thought it was Isaiah Downs. It was actually Braden Clopton. And they said, hey, he just came out of nowhere. They've got you know, all conference players at every other position in the secondary. He's the only guy on the defense that didn't make an all conference team, but he's steady. And he just makes plays. 62 tackles coming into this ball game for Clopton. That's your freshman. Third down and 10 now. Rain still coming down. Wet field, wet football. And Heiden just keeps it. And down he goes. No running room whatsoever. Trevor Williams made sure of that. And now South Dakota State has to snap it and punt it from deep in its own end zone. When they hold true and hold serve in terms of field position battle. Punted it away, hoping to keep San Diego, excuse me, South Dakota State down inside their five yard line, and now they're staring at number 12, Mr. Ezzer. Had a punt return for a touchdown last week and had one in the first quarter that was called back. First things first, they got to snap it and get rid of the punt. They do, it's a line drive, and Ezzer won't get a chance at this one. This works out okay for South Dakota State, rolling out of bounds around the 50-yard line. It remains 7-0 Jackrabbits, early second quarter in Frisco. Well, last year the hero, or last week the hero for uh, Sam Houston was Jaquez Ezer. Made a ton of plays as a receiver and as a returner. Had a 69-yard touchdown catch and run, turning the defender around and then an 80-yard punt return for a touchdown. Transfer from Howard, second team All-American. Had a punt return for a score called back in this one already. Body type a lot like Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill goes 5'10", 185. 
Ezard goes 5'9", about 190 pounds. With tremendous playmaking ability. Noah Smith gets the carry on first down. Up to about the 48 yard line gain of five on the play. Let's get uh, an update on the injury status of Eric Schmidt. Here is Chris. Yeah, after taking that hit the last series, Dave, he spoke with the medical training staff. They looked at him. He was spinning up blood the entire uh, time he was on the sidelines. Told them it, he's fine to go. He's a guy who's tried to put on weight over the offseason, about 10 pounds. Because of his size, has battled through injuries his whole career. Wow, spitting up blood, but minutes later he's back on the field. Shows you his toughness. Second down and six. Jefferson finds a running lane at the 40 and down to the 35 yard line. It's a 17-yard gain for Ramon Jefferson. He's got playoff experience, played in Maine, was in the postseason in 2018. Got a little counter play where they start one way and come back the other, pulling a couple of linemen out in front, but they are starting to get the football to playmakers. Ezard. And now Ramon Jefferson look for a day to get himself involved in this thing. Wide receiver screen to Ezard gets a block inside the 25 on the cutback. Ezard still going inside the 15. Inside the five into the end zone. Jaquez Ezard touchdown. All it takes is one missed tackle, and this guy will make you pay. Excellent with the ball in his hands. He is flat out electric. A nice unselfish block by Adeyi. That frees up Ezard, and then just relax and watch the man work. So one touchdown called back. Now, he, he lost the ball. Ooh. Boy, it got punched out. I, I still think he crossed the plane. We'll see if they look at this. Yeah, snap it if you're Sam Houston. They did, and the extra point is good. It was close. A little surprised they didn't review that, but it did look like he did cross the plane. Doesn't matter now. We're tied at seven. Catch and run for a touchdown for Jaquez Ezzard to tie the game after having one called back in the first quarter. Let's take a look, though. Did the ball come out before he crossed the plane? Awfully hard to tell here. They did not review it further and stop action. Let's bring in Steve Shaw, who is our rules expert, national coordinator of officials. What do you think, Steve? Well, there really was not a view that you could overturn on this. Uh, may have been worth a stop just to take a look. But you've got to have indisputable video evidence, and we never really had anything. It was very close down the line, but I think if we'd have stopped it, this would have been a stands. You agree with that, Andre? I agree with it. It was close, but nothing uh, where you're going to enough evidence to, to really overturn it. Cameron Hearn kicking off here. Here's Isaiah Davis for South Dakota State. Past the 25, and up past the 40 before he's taken down, but an excellent return by the true freshman. So Keaton Heidi, South Dakota State quarterback, two for five passing so far in this game. Two rushes for one yard. He came in after the first possession when Mark Gronowski, the true freshman quarterback starter for South Dakota State, was injured and will not return. What do you think of uh, the job he's done so far? Just got to get him some easy throws to get him settled in. He, right now, Seeing one receiver, and that's where he's going with the football. Almost turned it over. We're in more of an in the area of a, a Sam Houston defender than uh, his own receiver for the last possession. Some of that, though, has got to be on the coaches letting him throw a wet ball with rain from his own goal line. They must have confidence in him. They run Davis here straight ahead past the 45 yard line. That helps when you're getting four or five yards of pop running the ball. Have the 605 Hogs in front of you and two really good running backs, that's what you're going to rely on. That's what, that's what will pave the way for, for South Dakota State the rest of this game. Pierre Strong and Isaiah Davis, who we've seen make some big plays here early, that, that's what they'll rely on going forward. Maybe mix in the Yankee brothers. They have a great center in West Janan who they ran behind in that last play. Let's see if they do that again here, second down and five. They will. This time Davis is stacked up though. No gain on the play. It'll be third down. 
That was Markel Perry making the hit for Sam Houston. Clopton in there again, mixing things up. He goes about 5'10, 170 pounds, but he's willing to throw his body around a little bit. Perry's an excellent pass rusher off the edge. This is a situation here where you can't get way up the field because you might be facing a draw play. One of these excellent backs. Of South Dakota State. Pierre Strong is in the game. They're going to throw it here. Heidi's pass is caught. A sliding catch by Yonke for a first down at the 47. Jackson Yonke with the grab. That moves the chains, and that should up the confidence of Keaton Heidi. Well, you saw him kind of go through the progression. He's looking left, and then Yonke's crossing from his right to left, so he came right in to his vision. And how about the touch on the football with this, with the rain going on? Nice throw. Excellent by the sophomore. Now three for six passing. Back to the ground game. Strong with the cutback, trying to get around the defender. And he's down to the 40 yard line. Good run. Six or seven yards. Isaiah Downs. Almost had a horse collar tackling. That's why he let go. Well, they have got two good ones. We've been talking about it the entire first half. Pierre Strong, excellent between the tackles, solid receiver out of the backfield. They want to hit a home run. Davis is the man, averaging about just under eight yards a carry and didn't have a negative carry all season long, did Isaiah Davis. All right, we're being told that. We have had lightning in the area. That's why the whistle just blew and we have a stoppage of play with 8.25 to go in the second quarter. It's actually not raining as much right now as it was earlier. It was really significant at the start it, of the game. The, there has been a detected lightning strike. We're gonna have the teams clear the field. So when there is lightning within eight miles, they stop play for 30 minutes. If there's another sighting within that time frame, the clock of 30 minutes restarts. So we're going to step aside with 8.25 to go in the second quarter. A lightning delay here in Frisco. Meantime, we are approaching a 70-minute weather delay in Frisco, South Dakota State, and Sam Houston both back on the field. There will not be a halftime of this game when they resume their play until they crown a champion. Back to Frisco, Texas we go. Dave Pash and Andre Ware. And Keaton Heidi warming up the backup quarterback for South Dakota State who came into the game after Mark Gronowski, the starter, got injured on the first series. Dave Pash with Andre Ware. So if you're trying to win a championship game, you're getting your first start of the year. You've been sitting in the locker room now for an hour and 10 minutes to think about, hey, it's my show now. What's going through his mind? Yeah, he's had some, some game experience. So he started five games in 2019. So the butterflies should be gone by now. But players are kind of creatures of habit. They like things on a schedule, and they don't like it interrupted. This is an interruption, to say the least. But hopefully now we'll get to the end of this one. They're just chopping at the bit to get back on the field and get this thing started. And they are going to shorten halftime. It'll be just a three-minute halftime. Let's take a look at how we got here. It started with the injury to Gronowski on the first series. You can see as he's taken down, watch his left leg here, lands out awkwardly after it gets twisted. And then on the very next play, there was no contact, but you can see here, he was injured, he came off, he will not return. A lot of mistakes, Andre, in that first half on both sides. Yeah, bad snaps on, from both teams, miscues from, from both teams, and South Dakota State able to take advantage of the first miscue and getting the ball into the end zone. And then all of a sudden, it was Mr. Ezzard. He woke up, put a spark in this Sam Houston offense, and finding the house 35 yards later after a little tunnel screen. That gets us to where we are right now, Dave, tied up at seven apiece. He also had a punt return for a touchdown called back because of an offensive penalty. And you look at the numbers for Heidi in relief, three of six passing, but it was pouring down rain. 
for the entire first half. All right, let's go check in now with the third member of our crew. Here's Chris Button. All right, we're having uh, some technical Difficulty, some audio issues there with Chris's mic. We'll try to get that sort sorted out. All right, it's fixed. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, both coaches told me that they just really try to listen to music, amp their guys up. Coach Sig said it was beef jerky and apples and oranges. I will say, though, the rain wrecked havoc on the equipment staff. For Sam Houston, they had run out of towels before that delay. They were cutting up beach towels just so the guys could have something to wipe their hands on. They were able to use a dryer to freshen up all the towels. And now that the rain has subsided a little bit, it's been good for these teams to be able to not have something because the field's still a little wet, but at least they have some towels and stuff to dry their hands off with. All right, Chris, thank you. So it was a one hour, 11 minute delay. And when there's lightning within eight miles, they stop it for at least 30 minutes. And then if there is another lightning strike during that 30 minute window, the clock restarts. And that's why it took an hour and 11 minutes because we had multiple strikes and they had to keep restarting the clock. It's still overcast. It's no longer raining. So hopefully we're done with the bad weather for the rest of the way. It looks as, as good now as it has since we arrived at the stadium. So uh, hopefully we'll, able to, we'll be able to get through this thing uninterrupted and see some good football. It will be South Dakota State ball. They've had a lot of time to talk about what they want to call here on second down and four at the 41-yard line of Sam Houston. First trip to the FCS championship game for both Sam Houston and South Dakota State. First time in the title game for South Dakota State. Sam Houston was last in the championship game in 2012. Let me be taking a shot here right out. Let's see who's warm and, and who's not. How about a direct snap to the running back, Pierre Strong? And he gets the first down to the 37-yard line. A nice, interesting formation. They sneak both. Pierre Strong and Isaiah Davis into the game and the convert. Well, they bring Heidi back in and go to more of a conventional style of, of offensive play. But my point was, you've been sitting for a long time. Let's see if the defensive backs can run. Give me speed on speed. It's dry now. Let's test this secondary of Sam Houston. Dry, but what's the footing like on the field? Let's Always see. the offense's advantage. They pick the jet sweep, Heidi rolling left, looking downfield, throws behind the receiver incomplete, going for Jackson Yonke, who was open at the 20 yard line with the pass off the mark, and it's second down and 10. And he might have been looking for Jaden Yonke, the other uh, twin brother, on a deep, deeper route. This one thrown, as you mentioned, behind him, but he was looking to go deep first, and then all of a sudden, Jackson. Yankee flashed in front of him later in that pass route. South Dakota State, the number one seed. Sam Houston, the number two seed. South Dakota State got here by beating Delaware in the semifinals 31-3. Sam Houston had a come from behind win against James Madison to get here. Run play off the left side. Strong spinning and down to the 27. Close to another first down for South Dakota State. Boy, he had one heck of a blocked by Wes Gennard, the the center. Pulling around, nice kick out block on the edge, working against Quentin Brown, the linebacker, and that opens things up for Pierre Strong. This offensive line, they've been relying on it most of the first half. He came out of the delay and going right back to, to putting things on the, the big guys up front. So first down at the 20. Seven yard line of Sam Houston. Strong with another run. Knocked down at the 23 yard line by Clopton, but they're getting four or five yards of pop on first down with Pierre Strong, the junior captain running back. Finalist for the Walter Payton Award, which goes to the top offensive player at FCS. He had 1,000 yards rushing as a freshman, did it again as a sophomore, and obviously here in the spring, not playing the normal slate of games. Pretty tough to get there, but he still averaged over 80 yards a game. up front. I don't think I've seen this formation before. Not sure what happened. I, and it's an offensive lineman that's got the ball now. 
It was in the hands of Yonke. I, I don't think I've ever seen this formation before. What trying happened? Trying to trick things up. Yonke's down. Oh, they handed the, it to him. Yeah, there. just kind of squatted down. And nice job by Braden Clopton, who has had one heck of a first half of recognizing the trick play and just sniffing things out. My question is, do they come up with that during the week or during the hour and 10 minute rain delay? During the delay. <laughs> it's been in the playbook. Hey, let's pull it out and try to run it down here. Maybe they should bury that one on the playback a little bit deeper. Third <laughs> down and six. Strong able to break a tackle, but that's it. He broke a tackle on the first guy, but down he goes. Back at the 26, a three-yard loss. And now you got to worry about the kicking game. They will try a field goal here with Cole Fromm on fourth and long. Boy, excellent penetration by Joseph Wallace. Kind of gets this started, splitting the double team, getting, making his way to Strong, and that reroutes the back and allows everybody else to show up at the party. So Cole Fromm will try a 43-yard field goal. His long on the year is 52. Not raining now, but obviously the field's still a little bit wet. Had an issue with snap so far. That one was good, but the kick is low and has no shot. So that's twice now on field goal tries there have been an issue in the kicking game for South Dakota State and remains 7 7. They have. It's not just a small win for Sam Houston. That's a, that's a big win. And the bad hold there is the cause. That whole mechanism has to run smoothly. It doesn't. And Sam Houston is going to benefit and dodge another score. Yeah, the holder, Ben Dinkle, couldn't get it down on the ground, and that impacted the kick. So Eric Schmidt, junior quarterback, player of the year in the Southland Conference, back to throw here in first down, and his pass is off the mark, incomplete, going for Crest. I'm not sure Crest saw the ball. Didn't look like he knew where that ball was. He got turned around, second and ten. Well, it looked like he got tied up with Jaquiz Ezard as well, both guys on a crossing route, and that's just not Cody Crest. We saw him drop one earlier. Unlike him, he is Mr. Reliable. Sam Houston, a 9-0 record. Come from behind win against North Dakota State in the quarters and last week against James Madison. Third appearance in the title game. They run the ball. Ramon Jefferson, he gets hammered at the 28-yard line by Isaiah Stahlberg. It'll bring him third and long. A reminder, the NCAA championship coverage continues today with the men's lacrosse first round at 5 Eastern and 7 Eastern on ESPNU. For more, go to NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. You know, you can set your watch. If a, if a team throws on first down and it's an incomplete pass, they're going to run it on second, trying to get back to a manageable situation on third down. You're at about third and seven, a little longer than Coach Keeler wants to be in, but it's manageable. Play clock down to five. There ain't four minutes to go on the game clock. Pressure coming off the edge. Schmidt gets rid of the pass, and it's caught at the 40-yard line for a first down by Adey. So a gain on the play of about 30, and a first down into South Dakota State territory. Right, what a job by Adey to come back to this football. This should have been thrown out in front. It's underthrown. He settles, picks up the nose of the football, makes a nice play. We have been waiting on Ife Adeyi to, to make his emergence into this game alongside Jaquiz Ezer. So first down at the 41-yard line, Schmid rolling to his left and throws the pass along the sideline incomplete. He was going for Harvin and Don Gardner, first team all-conference and second team all-America corner out of Chicago, was in coverage that time. When he had Harvin open earlier if he goes ahead and just squares his hips and it may be the footing or the, the, the surface as to why Eric Smith on a rollout couldn't square up and let it go just a tad bit earlier otherwise you're still maybe still making your call Irvin was so wide open excuse me Harvin was so wide open on the 41 of South Dakota State here's Smith on the sprint out Tracked down and pushed out of bounds for a loss. There is a penalty mag, a penalty flag on the play as Ogrindy, who had a fumble recovery in the first quarter, pushed the runner, Noah Smith, out of bounds. It didn't look like he was trying to take him down with the horse collar. What about the speed? 
Yeah, but that's a defensive end running down a running back at about 270 pounds. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 22, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It happened so fast. When did he have time to face well, mask somebody? <laughs> and again, initially here, you watched. Oh, there yeah. we go, right there. Yep. Tugged on it. You see that head turn, you're going to get that penalty thrown. Uh, puts the ball at the 26 yard line of South Dakota State. I thought maybe it happened trying to fight off a block, but he was out there so quick. Schmid to throw. Steps up in the pocket and sacked at the 30 yard line. Boy, Thomas Stacker has been all over the place so far in this game. Xavier Ward, who was injured before the break, was also in on the stuff. Watch the pile move. Can't block him one-on-one. -on -one. It's just too, he's too big, too stout. Caleb Sanders inside, Xavier Ward. That's the strength of their defensive line. And he had a day he opened, but no time to get him the football. So a four-yard loss, two and a half to go here in the first half. Smith with the cutback inside the 20 and grounded at the 18-yard line. Noah Smith, very dangerous. I checked that it was Jefferson, the ball carrier, very dangerous with the ball in his hands. Jefferson got about 10 yards on the play, third and two. The move he threw on the first defender to show up, just left him standing there. And he's starting to find a rhythm. The Sam Houston offense, the running game, starting to find a rhythm. Two minutes to go, third down and two. Direct snap to Noah Smith. And he's got the first down inside the 15-yard line. Now this is when things speed up. You're going to throw the football. Routes have to be run more precise and get into your cuts. Quarterbacks, faster reads, and the ball comes out quickly. You've got to be on the same page with the receivers. And then defensively, you've got to be ready to react once you see the quarterback raise that arm up. Ninth play of the drive, fresh set of downs at the 15 of South Dakota State. 127 counting, Schmid to the air. Fires to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown by Ezzard. Two in the first half for Jaquez Ezzard. A nice, quick read by Eric Schmid and Jaquez Ezzard on the same page with his quarterback. Beat man coverage off the line of scrimmage. That's their best cover man. And Don Gardner gets him turned around. One of the things we talked about, the footing, you know where you're going as a receiver. Defensive back, they're kind of trying to anticipate. Gardner tried to, and Ezzard just left him slipping. 15-yard touchdown catch for Ezzard. His fourth touchdown in the last two games, and the extra point makes it 14-7. We'll keep it here for the final 121 of the first half. But Jaquez Ezzard, grad transfer from Howard, second team All-America. He scored as a receiver, a runner, and a punt returner multiple times this season. And he's become the breakout star of the FCS playoffs. Yeah, this is good on good. This is their best, best pass cover man against the best receiver for Sam Houston. And when you know where you're going, the other guy's guessing. You can sometimes make guys look foolish on a, on a surface, a wet field like today. So a total of four touchdowns, including that 80-yard punt return for a score. And he had a punt return for a score in this game, but it got called back because of a penalty. A lot of people are questioning, well, you know, what kind of 40s he's going to run? I don't care. It will be criminal if this kid's not in an NFL camp next year and playing for somebody. This, he is a football player. I don't care what he's going to run. Give him an opportunity, and he's going to surprise you. Especially in today's NFL with how they use a lot of the smaller receivers. Obviously, everybody points to Tyreek Hill and the Chiefs. And, and the job he does on special teams that you just described. I mean, he is a baller. South Dakota State does have all of its timeouts and a minute 21 to work with. South Dakota State led 7-0, but 14 straight points by Sam Houston. Now a pooch kick. That and it's uh, fielded at the 20-yard line and out to about the 30. Now a flag comes in. Sam Houston did that last week and actually recovered the ball. It was a key part of their turnaround from 17 down to up 11 on James Madison in that semifinal victory.
During the return, legal block in the back, number seven on the return team. 10 yard penalty, first down. And now, now Dave, here South Dakota State, and we'll see here the, at the left side, right there in the back. That block in the back is going to put South Dakota State in the hole, but offensively, find your playmakers. Jackson Yonke, Jaden Yonke, get them involved, along with Pierre Strong and Davis. And if you're going to go the route of the, by way of running back, get these guys out on the edges because they are stout inside right now. Joseph Wallace for Sam Houston. That's a pretty good football inside. They're going to run it on first down. Strong finds a gap out to the 27. So that's a good play there on first down. Pick up a nine on the play. McCollum with the tackle. They get right to the line to snap it. Pass play on second and short. Heidi across the middle. Yankee gets drilled at the 30, but able to turn back upfield and get the first down before he steps out of bounds at the 31. I'm trying to find some rhythm right here before the half. About 50 seconds, 52 seconds left. Doing some little no huddle. We'll hurry up at the line of scrimmage to get the football snapped and, and try to catch once catch Sam Houston out of position, but also find some big plays on, on the intermediate uh, passing in the media, intermediate passing game. A reminder, we'll have just a three-minute half time, and then we'll start the third quarter after we had an hour, 11-minute lightning delay. Heidi from the pocket in trouble, gets hit, gets rid of the pass to Pierre Strong, who's out of bounds, and then some contact late. Will they throw a flag? It looked like incidental contact to me. It didn't look like anything intentional or fierce by Trevor Williams, so no penalty marker on the play. Clock stop with 45 seconds left. You can go back and look, and there's a big old skid, you know, big mark where Strong was sliding at the end of this. It wasn't because of Trevor Williams. You see him there trying to slow himself down? Yep. It looked a lot worse than it actually was. So good job by the officials there, not to jump the gun and throw the flex. It was right in front of the South Dakota State bench. Second and two. Heidi with time, everybody covered. So Heidi leaves the pocket. A flag down, likely holding is called. Heidi picked up the first down, but this will come back. 38 seconds to go. Holding offense, number 71. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Aaron Johnson, the left tackle, the guilty party. Yeah, this is just kind of rust. He's going to have an inside receiver break in here, and if you played, you make this throw right now. Right now, you make the throw. But, you know, if you haven't played in a while, then you tend to hold that one, and you want to hit the guys that are wide open instead of just delivering the football and playing. Seventh penalty on South Dakota State. Heidi in trouble, steps up to elude pressure and throws it out of bounds, incomplete, had strong in the area. Probably better that he just threw it away. Another flag in the backfield. Will we have holding again? Boy, 32 seconds. How do you manage this if you're Casey Keeler? Personal foul, roughing the passer, number oh. 95 defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, you don't have to manage it because it's against your group, but you're going to see Right at the end of it. Yeah, Joe and Wallace. Joe Wallace. And he's trying, he knew it right away, trying to help Heidi up. Wallace got him in the face mask, and that's automatically going to be a penalty when he hit the quarterback in the head. Wallace had transfer from Texas Tech, who was very humble and talking with us this week. Made some mistakes as a younger player, ended up transferring, has become a leader on this team of captain, but made a big mistake there. Big hit here, ball floats into the air and incomplete. It was tipped by Trevor Williams. Pressure in the face of the quarterback, Heidi, by Mascaro with 26 seconds left at second and 10. How many times have you heard me, even way back when, going late over the middle is a bad thing. And you just, you just cannot go late. You hold it, hold it, and then you're going to go late over the middle. And you go late over the middle and high, that's the double whammy. You know, Jaden Yonke actually did a good play to get a hand on that ball for the offense. Otherwise, that probably would not have been tipped and it would have just been intercepted, yeah. maybe run back. Here's Heidi, get hit again, ball flutters, and this one is picked off by Quentin Brown. It'll be Sam Houston ball with 18 seconds left in the first half at midfield. 
I've got two timeouts. I'm Casey Keeler. I'm trying to figure out how to dial up something deep here with 18 seconds and two timeouts. I am definitely at, at midfield going to take a shot, but it's once again the pressure, and it's not by way of blitz. It's the four defensive linemen, K, Wallace, Perry gets in there. But just blinding the quarterback's view, forcing him to make a bad decision, and sometimes, Dave, it's not the sacks that are the game changers. It's the pressure that forces an even bigger play on the back end. Great job by Joe Wallace. Gives his team the ball at midfield. Schmid leaving the pocket. He's got some running room at the 40-yard line. Inside the 30, and he steps out of bounds. There is a penalty marker down in the backfield. I think you're going to have a hold out on the edge as Schmid was turning the corner. That would wipe out a 27-yard run which would have put Sam Houston in field goal range with 10 seconds to go. Holding number 76 offense. 10 yard penalty to P for a foul. Boy, right there, just the big fella, the left tackle, Anderson, got a handful of jersey. That's why he was, that's why he had a clear path. That was not a ton of running room. <laughs> and so now it looks like Sam Houston will just take a knee and end the first half. Schmid takes a knee. There is some pushing and shoving. But no penalty flags, and that's the end of the first half. 14-7, Sam Houston will be right back after the break. And now a word from our local stations. A lot of with Andre Ware, Chris Budden, Dave Pash back in Frisco, the 2021 FCS Championship game. Sam Houston leading South Dakota State 14 to 7. Mark Gronowski, the best player for the Jackrabbits, was hurt on their first drive. And as you see, only 44 passing yards, and Gronowski had 16 of those. So Keaton Heidi basically played a full half and only had 28 passing yards. Jaquez Ezzard has been the difference in this game for Sam Houston. Well, they just had to find a way to get him the football. And you, know, so you subtract the punt return for a touchdown, but here a nice little tunnel screen, and he's able to turn it in to a touchdown 35 yards later, just taking advantage of his ability in the open field. Then they get down with excellent field position. It's best on best with Ezard against Don Gardner, the corner for South Dakota State, and Ezard coming away with a win there. He has affected this game about as much as you can in the first half. The two receiving touchdowns and a punt return for a score that was called back because of a penalty, which didn't really seem to impact the play that much. He had a brilliant game in the semifinals, over 100 receiving yards, a 69-yard touchdown catch, an 80-yard punt return, and a come-from-behind win against James Madison. Now they have the lead here to start the second half, and they will get the football. Trying to capture their first national championship. They went to the title game in 2011 and 2012, but lost to North Dakota State. North Dakota State has dominated FCS the last decade, save one title by James Madison. So eight of the last nine won by North Dakota State, but they were knocked out in the quarterfinals by Sam Houston. And so the winner of this game, it'll be the first football championship in school history for either. In fact, this is South Dakota State's first trip to the championship game. Cameron Alexander and Ramon Jefferson are deep. Cole Fromm will kick off here. For South Dakota State, we start the third quarter after just a three-minute halftime because of the hour 11-minute lightning delay. Alexander slips and falls down at the 20-yard line. And trying to make a move and redirect himself. Just the, the footing going right from under him. You see all that rain starting to take its toll on this field. It was pouring for three or four hours and has either been drizzling or stopped altogether for the last 45 minutes or so. Sam Houston from its 20 yard line, junior quarterback Eric Schmidt, Southland Conference Player of the Year. 
Going to give it to Jefferson. Spins out of one tackle and then grabbed to the ankles and brought down by Michael Griffin after a pickup of seven. Yeah, excellent play call for Ryan Cardi, the offensive coordinator. They're just trying to spread South Dakota State out. And they get back as out in space. That's where they're going to run the football with Jefferson. You can just count guys in the box when there's you know five six that's a that's it an invite for Eric Schmidt to hand off to Jefferson Schmidt to throw here on second and short and not on the same page with his receiver crest incomplete don't know if that was on the quarterback or if crest made a mistake he's made several in this game so far third down yeah it usually doesn't happen they have excellent chemistry together both he and Schmidt and they spend countless hours throwing and catching so that they can develop that chemistry. But today, you're right, it just, just has not been there. Toyota Stadium in Frisco, about 30 minutes north of DFW Airport. Stadium about half full, 7,500. Schmidt over the middle, caught by Crest, hit. Is he short or did he get it the official where he's going to mark it looks like it's going to be enough for a first down for Sam Houston and despite a great break on the ball by Michael Griffin it will be a first down yeah, and that's just a smart you know, veteran type player when you know to run the route at the first down yep. marker not beyond it but I mean not in front of it but just right on it knows exactly where to get to where if he catches it he's going to have the first down after he's tackled well, I'm, I'm not sure when he caught the ball based on where the ball position was if he was passed. You might want to snap this 30 yard quickly. line. They do swing pass Ezra trying to get the perimeter and he slips and is brought down at the 32 yard line by Adam Box. So a short game a rare play by Ezra that doesn't go for 10 plus yards. <laughs> he can get him in bunches can he first team all conference. The uh, Southland Conference newcomer of the year, as, as you mentioned, transferring from Howard. He just called uh, for a sub, so you wonder if he got injured there, too. He was a little slow getting up, and look at the turf. And the, the grass there where players now are starting to slip and slide a little bit. Gain of two, two minutes gone by. High snap, Schmidt able to collect it, just takes off and gets wrapped up at the shoulders. And brought down at the 36. Held on to the ball there, too, as three or four uh, South Dakota State defenders were trying to rip it out. Schmidt needs some help getting up from his center, Ethan Hagler, and he's banged up. Well, he had been uh, for a couple of weeks nursing hamstring injuries, and he got yanked pretty good and almost lost the football. Oh, wow. That right leg there, man. But he's going to stay on the field. Chris Button had a report of the first half. He got hit so hard he was spitting up blood. But he came right back in for the first play of the next series. We do have a timeout here by Sam Houston, though. Yeah, you may want to check him out and make sure you got the right play call. But it'll also give Eric Smith a little chance to, to clear himself. Back in a moment, early third quarter. We're going to look further here. Eric Schmidt might have to go to the backup, Mike Dare. Eric Schmidt staying in the game, but he's taking a beating in this ball game. This was a hit from the first half. He ended up spitting up blood on the sideline, came right back in the next series. Then just a moment ago, watch his right leg. He lost the ball, but recovered it. They went to the sideline, just retaped his ankle, and he's back out there for third down and four. Tough customer. He is tough. Son of a coach, played for his dad at the Woodlands. He'll throw on third down and four. Pressure in his face. Ball is tipped, and it's caught. Going to be close to a first down. Noah Smith on the redirection. Comes up about a yard short of the line to gain at the 39. It'll be fourth down and one. Boy, just tremendous pressure. Deshaun Gales coming off a delayed blitz off the corner. Forces the ball out a little sooner than Eric Smith wanted to, to throw it. Casey Keeler's going to play the field position battle here with a 14-7 lead. Looked like that ball hit defensive lineman Cade Trevere as McRobert gets the punt away just in time. Yonke is back. He's going to let this bounce. 
And it will roll to a stop at the 19-yard line. It's this year's second major, and it's on ESPN, the 103rd PGA Championship, Thursday at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time for the Kiowa Island Ocean Course in South Carolina. It's the longest in major championship history, 7,838 yards. Our first round coverage starts 7 a.m. on ESPN Plus. To get ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. 7,800 yards, are you kidding me? <laughs> they want him worn down after the third round, huh? <laughs> Hope the weather's be better there than it has been here. Quarterback in trouble, Heidi's arm hit, it's almost picked off by Jahari K. Joe Wallace had pressure again Keaton on Heidi Keaton Heidi. K could not come up with the interception though. You think Joe Wallace knows that it's the national championship game? How many times have you called his name today? I mean, just relentless in his pursuit to the quarterback all game long and then his partner in crime, Jahari K almost comes up with this self-tipped interception, but that big fella is playing some ball, number 95. Graduated this week with his degree in communications, a captain, one of the leaders of this team. Second down and 10. No running room for Strong, and it's Wallace again, among others. Quentin Brown there also. It'll be third down and long for South Dakota State. Known by his teammates as Q. Another first team All Southland Conference player, and mentioned it earlier. 10 of the 11 made an all conference team, or the first or second team. That's conference domination oh, right there. Yeah, they're. 20 straight games without giving up the 100 Third yard rusher. Although James Madison had a 98 yard rusher last week. Pierre Strong's been held to 47. That's about half his season average. This is a passing situation here, though. Third and 11. Heidi has a completion and a first down to the 30 yard line for Zach Hines. A defender in coverage slipped and fell, and that helped Hines get open. And it was Trevor Williams. And, and remember, at the top of the show, we started talking about the offense has the advantage in conditions like this because you know where you're going, the depth of the route, and you're going to hook up so you can keep your feet under you as a receiver. Defensive backs, linebackers, they're trying to anticipate, and there it bit Trevor Williams. 13-yard pickup and a big first down completion for the sophomore quarterback, Keaton Heidi. Go back to the ground game. What a smack. Markel Perry right in the face of Isaiah Davis. Been a very physical game here this afternoon in Frisco. Second down and long coming up, no game. And known more as a pass rusher, but he is more than willing in the run game to stand in there and fight. It's leverage and then finishes the play. He is some athlete playing on the edge for Casey Keeler's defense. Davis will stay in the game at running back. They shift the two tight ends. Deaton Heidi, two, pass, two passes thrown coming into today. Got a wide open Davis out of the backfield. He's got another first down. He stepped out, but after he moved the chains, he's out at the 43. It's a 13-yard pickup. Good play by... Zion McCollum to make the tackle on the sideline. Otherwise, uh, Davis might still be running. I love the read by Heidi. Nice and quick, and you see that your, your running back is outflanked the defense. They're trying to play zone coverage. Everything gets pulled inside. His job with a footwork, staying in bounds just, just long enough to pick up the first down. Ball on the 43-yard line, a pitch too strong. And he turns it back upfield, crosses midfield, and a gain of about eight before he's wrapped up by Clopton at the 49-yard line. South Dakota State in Sam Houston territory, 8.40 to go in the third. Reminds me a little bit of Raheem Boyd that played at Arkansas. Just, just the way he runs the football, more of that kind of upright running style. He's a good player. Two-time first team, Missouri Valley. Captain, the junior from Little Rock. Second down and two here, South Dakota State. Strong again, pushed back at the line of scrimmage. 
Nowhere to go. Javon Leon, another All-America defensive lineman for the Sam Houston team with the stick. It'll bring up third and short. Clopton's trying to argue that he had the football. He got the football out of there. Shows up late. Close. Here you gotta convert if you're South Dakota State. Go back to your money player and Isaiah Davis, who's in the game now. They're just two of seven on third down. Out of the pistol. It will be Davis, and he gets the first down, pushes the pile down to the 45, and still going. They can't get this guy to the ground. They finally stop forward progress at the 41 yard line. Six foot one, 220 pound true freshman, Missouri Player of the Year in high school a year ago. Boy, and he was just not going to be denied. This nice low center of gravity, and you know, he's known more for hitting the big plays, but arguably just as solid running between the tackles. Picked up eight there. This has been maybe the best drive that, that Keaton Heidi has engineered for South Dakota State. Down to the 42 yard line, another run play. Davis doesn't get much here. Quentin Brown wraps him up after a two yard pickup. That's tough to defend when you got two as good as Strong and Davis. You know, you get a fresh back coming at you. Davis steps in, catches the ball, and is able to convert for a first down, and then there coming back on third down and short, able to move the pile. Goes back to that offensive line that you touched on a lot in this game, though, yeah. led by Wes Janather, outstanding center, Garrett Greenfield at right tackles on All America, and he's just a sophomore. And a big fella at 6'6, 295 pounds. He goes 6'6, 295 at left tackle as well with Aaron Johnson. Davis. Hole does not open, but again, Davis with the feet moving down to the 35, so probably should have gained one instead he gained four. And now you got some options here. Maybe you're in four down territory at the opponent's 35. It'll be third down at about three. This is why you, when you play South Dakota State, you know you're in for a fight because they don't quit. They go hurry up here. Davis lost his footing on the cut and got two. And let's see if South Dakota State goes for it. You would think so. Fourth yeah. down and two is two. They do have a, a kicker in Cole Fromm who's made a 52 yarder, but you have to wonder with the footing and all the issues that we've had on special teams so far in this game if uh, they're just going to run it here. Well, that, that play, that called run was set up because they knew they were going for it on fourth down. Sure. Pierre Strong in the game at running back now. It's going to be a pass play though. Heidi setting up and the pass behind Strong incomplete. Sam Houston takes over on downs with 4.57 to go in the third. I mean, he is wide open in the flat. It's just like you draw it up and just unable to convert. Throw it out in front. You're still playing. We're going to go to break with Sam Houston up 14-7. Sam Houston head coach Casey Keeler trying to become the first to win FCS championships at two different schools. He won it at Delaware with Joe Flacco back in 2003. This is actually his 11th national title game, either as a coach or as a player. His team up 14-7. Sam Houston back on the field. First down on the 33-yard line. Here comes a reverse and a flea flicker. Schmidt slips, though. Ball flutters. It's still caught by Ezard at the 25. And Ezard makes something out of it. Ooh. Out to the 35-yard line. Schmidt is lucky that ball wasn't intercepted. I, I think Ezard is hurt again. I think Ezard was banged up from earlier when you made mention. And they are lucky that this one even got out of the hands of Eric Schmidt. You got a full on runner coming at him as he slips. And that could have easily, if it hung in the air longer, <laughs> gone the other way for six. 
Instead, it's a two-yard game, but Ezra had to go to the sideline. Second down and eight, and they run the ball here. Kyron Jackson keeps the pile moving out to the 40-yard line, so it'll be third down and three after a gain of five. Keeler now in his seventh year as the head man at Sam Houston. If he wins today, he will pass Jim Trestle for the most playoff wins in FCS history, and he had a lot of success at Division III Rowan back in the 90s. He said after 2017 that he had to change the makeup of this, this program. Couldn't win on just speed alone, and what was it, a quick makeover. Schmid rolling to his left on third and three, and the pass is on target. First down inside the 40-yard line of Day with the grab, but what a throw that time by Eric Schmid. Well, what a block that he picked up in protection to allow him to get on the edge. Watch the block here by Kyron Jackson. Just chopped it down on the outside to open up a nice big throwing lane for Eric Schmidt. What a block, an unselfish player coming into the ball game at this stage and just doing his job. We asked the players this week who's the vocal leader. They said Kyron Jackson. He's their third string running back, but he's their leader, and you saw that in action. First down, pressure coming off the edge, and it's a day with the catch again. Push back at the 38-yard line by Tetzloff. Short gain on the play. Three minutes to go here in the third with Sam Houston in front by seven. This is what we get used to seeing with Sam Houston. Tempo. All of a sudden, they start to strike, and it's big plays and completions, and they're right back at the line of scrimmage in your face. They like the personnel that South Dakota State's in right now, so they're going to stay in this no-huddle attack and come after them. On second down and eight, Schmidt, quick throw, caught by the tight end, Schley, short of the line to gain. Third and two coming up at the South Dakota State 31. A good, pr pretty good tight end of, his, of their own in Isaac Schley. 15 receptions on the season, a big kid at 6'5", about 250 pounds, and I say that of their own because you look at South Dakota State's roster, they go three deep at that, that position, one six seven and two six fives, and all three of them can run. Third down and two is Sam Houston in four down territory if he can't pick it up here. Ramon Jefferson is the running back and a timeout called. That's the second burned by Sam Houston, so that leaves the Bearcats with just one here late in the third in Frisco in the national championship game. Taking a look at the Capital One Cup standings as teams compete for a combined $400,000 in student athlete scholarships from Capital One, Stanford on top in the Women's Cup standings, and Alabama leading in the Men's Cup standings. Dave Pash, Andre Ware, Chris Budden, big third down here for Sam Houston, leading 14 7 late in the third in the FCS Championship. I'm trying to get Eric Smith out on the edges here. If, he's, if he can move and that ankle's not a problem, let him get work the edges. Instead, Jefferson with the call straight up the middle, first down to the 27-yard line. They just hammered at that time between the tackles against that South Dakota State front. It's enough to move the chains. Well, he has really been a weapon today, Ramon Jefferson. When they've needed some big-time runs from him, he's been able to provide. Get nice movement up front, creating a nice crease for Jefferson. And Drive's going to continue for Sam Houston. Fresh set of downs at the 26-yard line. Schmid will throw it here. Now he just tucks and runs and scoots out of bounds after a gain of five. You know, it's a really cool story for Ramon Jefferson. He just picked up that first down. He's from the Bronx, and his mom, Dawn Jones, is here today. It's the first yeah. time that she's had a chance to watch her son Ramon play in person since he left home to go to Sam Houston. Right, he is a big, big football, just loves the game, just can't get enough of it. Those martial arts, too. He's studying, I think, since he was a, a pup. Started out at Maine, was in the playoffs there in 2018, transferred then to Sam Houston. Schmid to throw it here, taking a shot, single coverage. Oh, what a catch with one hand, and then the ball came out. It came out at the last second. Ezard could not pull it down. That would have been one of the greatest catches we've seen this postseason. Don Gardner had coverage, and it's third down and seven. That might have put the icing on the cake, but 
It's just good on good. The, Don Gardner has followed Ezard everywhere he has gone today. That's his assignment. Where Ezard goes, you go. The coaching staff told us that. Can't throw one better, and he almost made one miraculous catch. Wow. See if South Dakota State brings some pressure here. Eric Schmid changing things. And the play clock down to two here. They have to burn their last time out. Did they get the play away? No, a flag is down. Casey Keeler, I guarantee you, did not want to call timeout, but he also didn't want to lose five yards. Offense, number three, five-yard penalty remains third down. I mean, now you're back at the 28-yard line. You're talking about a 45-yard field goal if you don't gain any yardage, and their kicker's a true freshman whose season long is 44 yards. And now, again, you've got you know, bad conditions here with a field that has been chewed up. See players slipping, a lot of missed kicks and bad holds and bad snaps. Here's the matchup up top. Hazard against Gardner. Schmidt is looking that way, throwing it downfield. Incomplete. Gardner had the coverage on Ezard, and it's fourth down and 11. Well, it's thrown out in front. There's no problem in terms of Ezard getting on top of Gardner. You just got to throw the football out in front. He actually throws it underneath and back inside. It should be over and outside. Ezra does a nice job of giving him the four yards necessary to fade him away from the defender. He's got to step in and make that throw. So here we go. It's been such an adventure today on special teams. Plus Sam Houston just had a guy run on late. Play clock winding down. 45 yard try. Ball is down and the kick is good. How about that? Seth Morgan, true freshman, career long. 45 yards in the title game to push it to a 10 point lead. No problem. I think Coach Keeler's coaching him up today. He's trying to coach up the officials right now, but I think he probably wanted I don't know if he was talking about the catch. I, I think. I think he wanted. He's wondering if Ezard held on to the ball long enough. Right, because you saw. For it to be a catch in the in the end zone. But but you gotta control it through the entire right. play, which he did not. So he did not have possession. And I think once uh, Coach Keeler gets a chance to see the replay on film, he will agree with the call on the field. But it's a 10 point lead. Andy didn't have to burn his final timeout. That was almost disastrous. So he got a 10 point lead over a backup quarterback playing in the biggest game of his life. Yes, he does have playing experience, but not in this situation. And obviously, Mark Gronowski, the starter, was the guy that won the job going into the season. You know. Heidi's going to see some pressure on this drive. So Davis decides to run it out here, and he is hit at the 20 yard line, and he's able to back his way out to the 28 with 27 seconds to go in the quarter. This week's Sunday night baseball game in the, uh, is the series finale between the Cardinals and the Padres. 7 Eastern time with coverage starting at 6 on ESPN and the ESPN app with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. All right, let's check in with Chris Budden with 27 seconds to go here in the quarter. Yeah, keep an eye on Heidi's right rib area. He spoke with the medical training staff. He was in some discomfort. He said, I'm fine, but he's been holding it the entire time on the sideline. He's been in there since that first series when Gronowski got hurt. 7 of 15 passing, 53 yards. He'll throw it here as the sun's out, and that pass was just a little bit off the mark, kind of like that fourth down throw. It didn't help that there was pressure right in his face as Heidi went down again. Kraft could not make the catch. Well, if he's got ribs, then he's feeling it right now because Jahari K came in just about untouched and, and tapped on that rib cage area some more. And it, it caused an incomplete pass. Actually, it's one of the other guys coming from around. That was Mascaro that made the hit, but yep, to your point, it's another hit on the quarterback. Second and ten. 
First time we've seen blue sky all day. An hour, 11 minute weather delay. Time to throw here. Man comes open. It's caught at midfield by Zach Hines into Sam Houston territory. A 23 yard pass play. Nothing like that to help with the old confidence of Heidi. I mean, nice sitting in the pocket. He's got a crosser. It's one of those big tight ends that we were talking about, the 6'7", Zach Hines. And now South Dakota State on the move, trying to make things interesting as we creep closer to the fourth quarter. One quarter away from a championship. We'll have a new title holder in 2021. Who will it be? Come back and find out. The two seed Sam Houston leads top seed South Dakota State 17-7 as we start the fourth quarter. The starting quarterback for the Jack Rabbits, Mark Gronowski injured on the first drive. They still led 7-0. Eric Schmidt is thrown for two touchdowns, both to this man, Jaquez Ezzard. Yeah, he has been a highlight reel after catching this pass and taking it 35 yards, making a bunch of Jack Rabbits miss along the way. Kind of got things started for Sam Houston, and then a nice fade route on the back end of this one. And then the almost just highlight reel type stuff with the one hand, just couldn't hold on to it. Boy, he's been special. Had a punt return for a touchdown, called back because of a penalty. Had a punt return for a touchdown and a receiving touchdown last week in the semifinals. So it's come down to this for these players that have waited since the fall to crown a champion. It's going to be a direct snap here. Wildcat quarterback is Davis on first down, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. The last time Sam Houston won a national championship was as an NAIA school back in 1964. South Dakota State in the championship game for the first time here in FCS. Was a Division II program until 2004. John Stigelmeyer, been a longtime coach, Took over his alma mater in 1997, was an assistant there for a decade, was a student and a student coach there back in the 70s. A lot of running room for Davis. First down and more inside the 30-yard line, and he can't keep his balance, otherwise he scores. As it is, he gains about 27 down to the 23-yard line. Boy, excellent job in terms of blocking out on the edge and the patience of Davis to go along with it. We talked about it. He's a home run hitter. I've been waiting. You're going to hold these. You're going to hold that type of back in check for a while, but not all day. Sooner or later, he's going to get one. Do you feel like even though with a field goal, you're back to within a score, they need a touchdown in this drive the way things have played out for them today offensively? You would like to, to have the big points, but I think any points at this stage to keep you in it would be huge. Just talking from a confidence standpoint. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Quarterback, here's no a doubt. movement, and that's going to push him back five yards. Full start, offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Yeah, as I was telling you, their whole mechanism in terms of attempting a field goal, snapper, holder, kicker, it's all been off, and we watched it in, in pregame, and they've struggled. It's carried itself over into the game today. So, so it's not a guarantee. All right, Cole Fron, the kicker slipped a couple times in warm-ups. You have to wonder if that starts getting in your head, especially in the title game. You're so worried about your footing. First down and 15. Going to keep it on the ground here with Davis. He's got running room off the left side. Breaks a tackle inside the 10-yard line. Keeps his feet and is into the end zone. Touchdown, South Dakota State. What a run by Isaiah Davis. That's just, it's just pure will, Dave. Just wanting to get in, and you could just see it in his body language that he was not going to be held out of the end zone. I mean, nice patience. Wes Gannant, the center, pulling out in front and just shaking off defender after defender to get himself in. What a run. Let's see if he stayed in bounds here or if he stepped out around the four-yard line. They might look at this a little bit longer. No, he's in. They're going to review it further, but looked like he kept his feet in to get his ninth rushing touchdown of the season and the second today. 
for a true freshman, Isaiah Davis. Normally, we're talking about the true freshman both. quarterback, Mark Actually, Gronowski, both. or both, yeah. But, but Gronowski gets more of the headlines, but uh, it's Davis that's getting it today. Yeah, unfortunately for Gronowski, he exited the game early. As you mentioned, the first drive, and it's been the other true freshman. Isaiah Davis has kind of kept South Dakota State in this ball game, and if this holds up, we are off to a fantastic finish here with 13-12 left. I think the left foot may have like gone over the out of bounds line, which made it look like it might have touched, but he gets it quickly, gets it back in, and that's going to be a touchdown. I think it's going to stand. That angle you can't tell, and the other angle, to your point, right? It looks like. It crossed maybe, but yeah, it didn't but never, step out. But never touched out of bounds. Right, when he landed back in, let's watch the left foot here. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's six. There's that first look where it just kind of glides over but comes immediately. How about knowing where you are on the field? That's gonna be six points. Great balance. Yeah. Right, guys grabbing at your left ankle and you're able to Keep your feet, That's have just, awareness of where you are. Yeah, sheer will, knowing where you are, and determined to rack up six points. They're taking a while with this one, though. Oh. Well, they must still have some doubt about whether. Tell them to call over here and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> After usually, review of the way on the field is confirmed, touchdown. That's even, even better than the stands. We got the confirmation. So an opportunity now with the extra point to get within three, but those were big three points for, from Sam Houston on that last possession. But how about the response by the top seed, South Dakota State? A lot of people wondered when they got the number one seed, why? They lost the game. They weren't undefeated. Everybody thought it was going to be James Madison, but they had some time off in March. South Dakota State still playing and knocking off opponents. Extra point is good. We've got a three-point game early in the fourth of the 2021 FCS Championship game. Frisco, it is graduation this time of year, and Aaron Schmidt earning a degree in general business. They held the graduation ceremony at their hotel Friday night. Here's Joe Wallace running up to get his degree. You know, this has become a thing for Keeler's players. They decided to hold graduation wherever they're at. Two years ago, they decided, well, we're just going to have it on the airplane. So this has become a thing. It's also really cool to see what Joe Wallace has done, kind of turning his life around after leaving Texas Tech and becoming a captain and a leader on this team. The majority of these players will be back next year with the extra year that COVID has given them. Guys like Schmidt and Wallace uh, also coming back next year. All right, Chris, good stuff. Here's the kickoff, which is going to be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. Uh, Chris touched on Joe Wallace, who was in Texas Tech, played for Cliff Kingsbury, was recruited there by Coach Cliff, and then left when the previous staff took over. Here he is, talked with us humbly about the mistakes he made in college, some off the field stuff, and yep. then said, look, I, I'm a changed person. He graduated, as Chris just talked about. He's their captain on defense. I tell you what, he's not just talking the talk. He's played it. He's walking it today. He's had some ball game and has harassed the quarterback all game long. Cliff Kingsbury sent a text, got it to uh, Sam Houston folks, just so proud of what Joe Wallace has become. Big hole here for Ramon Jefferson. South Dakota State tries to rip it out. Tetzloff was yanking at it, couldn't get it out, though. It's a gain of about eight on the play. Two minutes into the fourth quarter, three-point lead for Sam Houston. And as long as they keep Logan Backus out in space, they've been able to formation him, number 12. Kind of right up here. And they keep him out of space. It's one of their one of their top tackles, or the top tackle on this defense. They're gonna run the football. Play fake here. Schmidt rolling out with time and an excellent adjustment by a day to make the catch on a pass that was thrown to the back shoulder at the 44 yard line, a pickup of 11. And it's a great pass by Schmidt to keep one, his, his receiver in bounds, and then the second being that he's not going to take contact. Sometimes you as a quarterback have to protect guys. You throw him inside, guess who's going to tee off on him? Tesla's going to tee off. 
Keep in mind, Sam Houston has just that one time out. I know we're not at that stage yet where you'd need it, but maybe later. Schmidt, pump fake, looking for a double move, and Ezard up high pulls it down at the 35-yard line. It doesn't matter what you do defensively against this guy, he can't be stopped. Well, the pay, they didn't even need to pump fake as a defensive back. Malik Lofton, well, no, it's... Yes, Excuse Gales. me, it's Sean Gales yeah. over there. But he was so far off in respecting Ezard that he couldn't even get himself back into the screen and into the plate. We're going to see that guy in a camp in the fall. Just a couple months here. Schmid off play action being chased. And that one incomplete. Got outside the tackle box. He, he did get it through the line of scrimmage. I don't think this will be grounding. No, he had Crest to that side, but it looked like he might have been blocking. They were trying to set up something to a day underneath, and it was blown up. Schmidt did the best thing he could was just to throw the football away and come back up here on second down. Ball on the 34 of South Dakota State, second down and 10. Game delayed by an hour plus because of Lightning. Schmidt keeps it and shouldn't have. He gets spun down for a loss at the 37-yard line. Tolu Grindy has had a huge day defensively for South Dakota State. Third long. Was he fast or what? He gets to the football in a hurry. And that's where you know, you've got to have the freedom as a quarterback to check in and out of plays. You've you got your own number crowd called and you're crowded up like this got to get your offense out of that play and into something else. Ball at the 36 yard line, third down. Third and 12 at the 36 of South Dakota State. Look at this respect. Safety help over the top of Ezra. Schmid, long throw to the sideline, incomplete. Going for Crest, would have been six yards short of the line to gain, and Crest is banged up. It looked like a shoulder maybe trying to come back and catch that one from, from Schmidt, but so I don't want to see him exit the game. Do you punt it here? You're at the 36 of the opponent. You try a 53, 54 yarder or do you punt it? He's gonna, I would go ahead and punt it trying to play the field position game, but the play call before fourth down might have been different. I may have run Ramon Jefferson trying to pick up half of it to give myself an opportunity on fourth down, but. I think when you're in this situation, go ahead and punt it and play field position. Nick Robert has a guy down there, so that was well done. Good job. Good execution. South Dakota State will have the ball, but inside it's 10. Down three, 10 14 to go in the title game. Isaiah Davis has been a stud today for South Dakota State. Yeah, he has carried the load when they needed a spark. He has provided it over and over a couple of big time runs to get himself into the end zone. And only needs about seven yards to go over 100, but the last touchdown run he had to draw within three points, he, has, he was just fantastic. But South Dakota State is backed up on its eight yard line. Strong is the running back here, trying to get the edge. And he's able to stiff arm his way out to the 10, and then he's tackled out of bounds by Isaiah Downs, gain of two. So 20 consecutive games without allowing a 100-yard rusher. Now, James Madison last week had a back that went for 98. As you talked about Davis closing in on 100, but he's also splitting carries with Pierre Strong. Well, they, they have as good a one-two punch as you can get in, in both Strong and Davis. We go back to Strong here to start this drive, but Rest assured, you're going to see Mr. Davis at some point. Keaton Heidi, the quarterback, did not start the game. Dumps the ball off here to Strong, and a good open field hit by Trevor Williams. Gain of three, so third down and manageable. Third and five. Let's see how Heidi handles this. He is 9 of 18 passing after throwing just two passes all season long. He came in after the first drive when Mark Gronowski got, got hurt. Talk about superstitious, players being superstitious. Where's the same pair? of game socks every single week. Those babies 
Got to be kind of fresh. I wonder what the downpour uh, <laughs> that we had here, if he kept those on our feet, if he broke tendency during that 70-minute delay. Got some fresh ones on ahead of them soaked. Third down and five. Pressure coming. Heidi's pass not close. Going for Yonke. South Dakota State's going to have to punt the ball here. 8.53 to go. And you're just hoping to get it out of here if you're South Dakota State. Even if you do, it's going to provide some great field position and so the the job that coach Keeler did in turn in playing the field position game has has worked out his defense stepped out played complimentary football and has flipped the field on South Dakota State this is not an easy out here because you've got Ezard as the return man yeah. Dinkle and Ezard waving for the fair catch and he's got it at the 47 yard line about all you could ask for if you're South Dakota State. Sam Houston's got the ball though, up three. If Philly Garcia didn't have the fighting spirit to drink. First round coverage of the 103rd PGA Championship, Thursday, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, from South Carolina. ESPN Plus, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. Alan Morikawa, last year's winner. We'll see what happens. Starting Thursday at the PGA at Kiwa Island Ocean Course. Sam Houston throwing on first down. Ezard out in space, steps out after he makes the catch. In South Dakota State territory at the 48-yard line, that's a five-yard pickup on the first play of this series. He's finding a way, Dave, to get the ball in a playmaker's hands. Doesn't take, take much. Six-yard hitch route, five-yard hitch. Just to keep him, keep him on the defense's mind. 45-yard field goal by Seth Morgan. Last quarter, the difference right now in the game for Sam Houston. Jefferson gets the first down. Actually, no, they're going to say he was stopped short. He bounced off the turf forward. Tetzloff was trying to strip the ball. It's going to be third down and one. Well, if, if Jefferson cuts outside as opposed to inside, he's got a blocker and Hagler, and he's still running. Not sure the spot there, right? Boy, I thought he was passed. The 44 yard line. The third down. And South Dakota State come up with a stop. They'll stack the box here. Jefferson easily gets the first down, lowers the shoulder at the 38 to get a couple extra yards, but that'll keep the clock moving. 7.35 and counting. Big moment player, Ramon Jefferson. Every time they've gone to him, they need to convert. He's been able to deliver for this Sam Houston football team. Jefferson averaging six and a half yards a carry. Sam Houston has held strong under four yards a pop. First down at the 36. Presser in the face of Schmidt and the pass is incomplete. Boy, jumping the snap count was a grindy that time and he yeah. leveled. Eric Schmidt has been hit a ton today. My goodness, does he have some get off oh. in terms of getting out of his stance and he is just, just right around Anderson, the left tackle. And when that happens, and it's that dominant, usually you start to get guys flinching at left tackle because they're trying to get a head start, a jump, to jump out in front of the defensive player. And nothing seems to phase Eric Schmidt. They say he just stays the same no matter what. I mean, he's been spitting up blood. He had to retape his ankle. He's been injured twice. Penalty marker down. Looks like Ir Harvin. Full stop, offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty for main second down. That's the second one of those. Remember, Ezard had one early in the ball game. A lot of mental errors. Second down and 15. Ball back now at the 41-yard line. Very little win. Sunny blue sky after a downpour for a good three, four hours and a delay of over an hour before they resume play midway through the second quarter. Three-point game midway through the fourth. Now, second and 15. Schmidt looking sideline. It's deflected. Incomplete. Logan Backus, two-time captain, four-year player, made a heck of a play that time. Great effort, third down. Yeah, just pre-snap read. Should have told Schmidt to go to the other side. He's going to have Backus underneath, and he's got Don Gardner over the top of the isolated route he was trying to throw to. That would tell me eliminate that side. 
come back to the front side and work there. Third and 15 on the 41. They rush four. Schmid in trouble. Gets out of there. A flag down. Schmid looking deep. Throwing it into the end zone where it's caught for a touchdown. Harvin pulls it in. Will it come back though? Schmid, meanwhile, is hurt. Yeah. He's down again, Dave, and it's that he's reaching for the right Holding ankle. Offense number 51. Stand down penalty. Repeat third down. So Jalen North commits a holding call. Sam Houston might have just won the game, but a holding violation negates that, and also Schmidt gets hurt again. What a heck of a throw escaping. I don't think he got hit. He just landed on that ankle when they taped up earlier. Nice, nice job by Harvin to, to adjust, get deep as the quarterback's rolling around and, and make a nice grab, but it's coming, it came back. Third and 25 now at the Sam Houston 49. They're just going to keep it on the ground with Jefferson, able to break a tackle and get to the 40-yard line. So this will give Sam Houston an opportunity to pin South Dakota State deep again. They just did it. Got the ball down to the 8-yard line. Well, the temptation is there. But the smart thing to do is to, to do exactly what you did last the last possession. Go ahead and play the field position game and rely on a defense that's gotten you this far. Don't know why they'd be tempted to go for it. Fourth and 15, I think. <laughs> this is without question the only choice. Let's see if McRobert can pin South Dakota State deep again. Here come the Jackrabbits. And this is not a good punt. It goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Only a 26-yard kick. Six minutes to go. South Dakota State ball down three in the title game. We are about an hour away from Sunday Night Baseball. Series finale between the Padres and the Cardinals. Our coverage starts at 6 on ESPN. And the ESPN app with Baseball Tonight Sunday Night Countdown. With Andre Ware and Chris Button, I'm Dave Pash in Frisco, Texas, the FCS championship. Both South Dakota State and Sam Houston trying to take home the title for the first time in program history. And it's a three-point lead for Sam Houston. South Dakota State has the ball on its 15-yard line. Six minutes to go. All of its timeouts. Backup quarterback Keaton Heidi in there for the starter. Mark Gronowski who got hurt on the first drive. Heidi rolls out, and his pass is high and incomplete. Trying to get Jackson Yankee out in space. Both the twins, Jaden and Jackson Yankee, have been kept in check in this game. Yeah, you just got to hit those passes. I mean, you just have to find a way to complete that to Jackson Yankee. I mean, it's a drive starter. It's, it's one of those where you're pinned back. They give me an easy throw. Just deliver on it and watch Yankee run. How it may not pick up the first down, but it's a confidence builder for your offense. Heidi just 9 of 20 passing 79 yards and an interception thrown. Isaiah Davis, who's got two rushing touchdowns. They get the carry here on second and 10, and he's got some room. Breaks another tackle at the 30-yard line. Still going at the 40. Davis into Sam Houston territory. Breaks another tackle down the sideline. The race is on. They won't get him. Touchdown. South Dakota State has the lead. 85 yards. Isaiah Davis. And he Derrick Henryed somebody on the way to the end zone. I mean, just a stiff arm to get a defender off me. Get off of me. There may have been Braden Clopton, who was the recipient of that, that stiff arm. What a run. Great freshman Isaiah Davis. Absolutely. Floor clopped in that time as he took it to the house to give the Jackrabbits the lead with 5.41 to go. Isaiah Davis now with 178 yards rushing, three touchdowns. They're going to look at this to make sure that he did not step out of bounds. I don't see anywhere in that run where it was, it would be determined that he went out of bounds, but that stiff arm was priceless. What a player. 
He was the Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year. He's from Joplin, was not highly recruited, ends up Why in not? Brookings, South Dakota. I don't know, at 6'1", 220 with that breakaway speed. We saw the home run right there. 85-yard rushing touchdown. He is averaging just under 13 yards per carry today, if, this, if that does indeed stand. Three touchdown runs, and all of them have been dramatic. He's checking the footwork along the sideline. And that looks like six points to me, Dave. Uh, he, he's pretty good friends with that sideline. He knows how to work it because there have been a couple times where he could have easily stepped out. Guys are at his feet, getting knocked off balance, and he's still breaking tackles and finding a way to hug that sideline, stay in bounds, and hit pay dirt. After the review, really on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Keep in mind, Sam Houston has just one timeout, had to burn two. Oh, there's plenty of time. Early in the third. Got a long way to go, 541. Depending on this extra point, though, they may need to get a touchdown. And they, they brought in Keaton Heidi to hold. He actually was not holding earlier in the game. Until the last score, an extra point, he was not the holder. But he's out here now, and he puts it down. And Fromm makes it. It's a four-point game, meaning Sam Houston needs a touchdown. Just one heck of a job up front by the offensive line, and then just the will to not get tackled, breaking tackles, cutting, stiff arming guys. And that's amazing right there to finish a run and then outrace the remainder of the defense to the end zone. Number 22, Isaiah Davis has had some afternoon. And imagine if South Dakota State pulls this off. Think of where this program was. A long-time Division II program. They had awful facilities, no buy-in at all. John Stiglmeyer was a student coach back in the 70s. He, he then went back to the school as an assistant coach. He didn't play football, but he went back as an assistant coach in the 80s and 90s, got the head job at age 40 in 1997. He said, when we went Division One in 2004, everything changed. The buy-in from the boosters, the athletic director, everything changed. The facilities, he thinks, are the best in FCS now. Yeah. They're getting great players from outside the state of South Dakota, and they have a chance at a title. What a finish. We're in for But Fromm kicks it out of bounds. Oh my goodness, just miss hit that one. Gonna give Sam Houston excellent field position here with 5.41 to go. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Bowling plates the 35 yard line, first down. Meanwhile, Eric Schmidt, you gotta wonder about his health. He's been hit a ton in this game. He is a competitor. He is sat right in there and taken the best of South Dakota State. Bent backwards, ankle, retape, just shot after shot. And he keeps coming back. He's got a big finish here ahead of him. They're going to run it. Ramon Jefferson trying to get the edge. He can't splatter it at the 33. He loses yardage. There's a Grindy again tracking down the ball carrier and taking him to the ground for a one-yard setback. Well, Grindy is some athlete, and he's not only rushing the passer, but he's playing sideline to sideline. And we're talking about a defensive end who just adds a, a another dimension and another level of speed to this Jackrabbit defense. So it's second down and 11, five minutes to go. South Dakota State outscored Sam Houston 14 0 here in the fourth. They get the ball into Ezard's hands, but not a lot of room after the catch. Pushed out of the 39. Sam Houston has been the comeback story, though, of the FCS playoffs down against North Dakota State in the fourth. Down big against James Madison late in the third, and obviously won both games. Yeah, they're going to have to reach in the bag of tricks and find a, a third comeback in a row. If they're to win the national championship today against South Dakota State. You would think four down territory, third down and six, pass to the sideline, and yes, first down catch 
by Jaquez Ezzard. So you're going to your best player here down the stretch. Yeah, throw a couple of hitch routes, and then all of a sudden you got to hitch and go. They're playing close on him. Okay, I, I'm going to sit it down right now. That's the second one in a row. So you're going to get Gardner biting at some point where you want him to roll the dice, and then I'm going to hitch and go and go over the top of it. They've got a safety that's camping out right on the back end just in case. They're thinking the same thing you are. Quick throw to this side. Harvin made the catch and tackled inbounds at midfield. So a gain of about four. Immediately after the game, stay tuned for the trophy presentation on ESPN3. Will it be Sam Houston or South Dakota State winning its first FCS championship? Second and six for the Bearcats. At the 49 of South Dakota State. Run play, Jefferson breaks free at the 45 and down to the 40. First down. 335 to go. Nice little dead leg move there by Ramon Jefferson. And we've, we've talked about it. I mean, just over and over, big plays in which to convert for first downs. Number four has been able to deliver for Sam Houston. FCS did not have football in the fall. Hard to say that it's been worth the wait, but it's been fun. Spring football in mid-May is, boy, that pass was way off the mark, and it looked like the day he was open. He thought he was held. So it's second down and 10. The clock stopped with 3.13 to go. Ball at the 40-yard line of South Dakota State. I actually thought it was Harvin that blew a route. He's sitting down when in the, that coverage look, he would convert to a fade, and Smith thought the same thing that he was going to continue on. He just pulled his route up. Schmidt, the Southland Conference Player of the Year. Going to throw it here with pressure in his face. Takes a shot downfield. Ezra Kip come up with it incomplete. Gardner in coverage. Ezra has come down with every jump ball in this game except that one. Well, if he, if they don't blitz here, he's got time to throw it, but it's because of the pressure coming off the edge that Schmidt really couldn't step into that throw. I mean, there's plenty, big time pressure, and he's still able to get it out there where Ezard has a chance to make a catch. Now it's third and third 10. Down Board down on 10. territory at the 40-yard line of South Dakota State. Noah Smith in the game at running back. A dual threat as a pass catcher and a runner. And that's where the ball was going. Smith being chased, breaks the tackle. Smith at the 35, takes a shot, dives out of bounds. We'll see where they spot him. Close, but it's not going to be enough. And so I think if you're Casey Keeler, you're going to have to go for it here on fourth down. Meanwhile, Don Gardner, their best cover corner, is shaken up, which means if South Dakota State doesn't use a timeout, he's going to have to come out for play. And there's another defender down for South Dakota State. We'll try to get a number for you. But it is fourth down and one at the 31-yard line. And because Sam Houston has only that one timeout, Obviously, this is the play of the game. Probably their last possession. Boy, just the ability to compete. Both Eric Schmidt and Isaiah Davis for South Dakota State. He may have gotten the first down when they go back and look at this. Yeah, that's close. Pylon Cam right there catching everything. So it was Dyshawn Gales that was the other injured player for South Dakota State. They are marking the ball a full yard short of the line to gain. With 2.58 to go, Sam Houston ball, third and, or fourth and one. And Coach Keeler's the giving them a, an earful over there on that spot. And over and over, we've talked about it tons of times. You need a big play, Who, who's delivered for you? If you're Sam Houston, it's been Ramon Davis. Excuse me, Ramon Jefferson and Isaiah Davis. And, uh, Ramon big stuff. But it's been Ramon Dave Jefferson has been big for Sam Houston. Fourth down and a yard. Schmidt's going to keep it. Beautiful call. He gets the first down. And out of bounds around the 20 yard line. Great yes. fake by Eric Schmidt. He got everybody going to the right. He went left and he got 11 yards. You got everybody thinking the way I was thinking about Ramon Jefferson. They go crashing down inside. You've got an athletic quarterback forcing 
South Dakota State to play 11 on 11. They didn't there, and they pay by giving Schmid the first down. Clock is moving at 222 and counting. Schmidt in trouble again, gets hit and sacked. There's a flag down, might be offside, and then a vicious tackle by Ogrindy yeah, in the backfield. Got to blow that one dead once he's around the line of scrimmage because Schmidt's taking a beating. Outside. defense number 22. But Find once, penalty, first down. once you see that he is you know, free on the quarterback, the whistles have to blow. We were trying to, you know, give the play a chance in case he gets it out of there, but he's been beaten all day, taking a beating all day, and got to blow that one dead. Meanwhile, there is an injured offensive lineman for Sam Houston. 2.17 to go. It's going to be first and five for Sam Houston at the South Dakota State 17-yard line, trailing by four, one timeout remaining. Each team seeking its first national championship. Eric Schmidt has taken a beating all day, been spitting up blood on the sideline, hurt his ankle, contact injuries, non-contact injuries, but he just keeps playing. And how about the trust in him and his toughness to put the ball in his hands on that fourth down call to run the ball and pick up the first down? He's been doing it all year for this team and for this offensive unit. It's four down territory from here to the house, the last two minutes and 17 seconds. Asks, they're asking him to deliver one more time for a national championship. Clock started on the ready for play, 2-11 and counting. First down and five for Sam Houston in the red zone. Schmidt's going to keep it here, and he's brought down in the backfield for a loss of five on the play. Michael Griffin starting safety with the tackle. Boy, if he gives this one to Jefferson, he may be into the end zone. They get everybody up the field, and he's got a nice crease right there. If he just gives it, nobody touches Jefferson, but he tries to keep it, maybe doing a little bit too much. Dave, and missed an opportunity for his running back, Ramon Jefferson. They lose the five yards they got on the offside penalty at second down and 10. Now they do hand it off to Jefferson, but he is level. Good tackle by Bach, wrapping him up at the 20-yard line. So it's going to be third and eight, a minute 23 to go, four down territory, one timeout remaining for Sam Houston. Now the one thing we haven't seen today out of Ezard is a slant, something inside. He's gone vertical, he's run hitch routes. Well, now may be the time where you, you set him up outside and come underneath. they got to get set up here. They're taking a lot of time off the clock. Ezard coming over here to the bottom of your screen and a trips formation and third down and eight inside a minute to go. And nobody's on it. I mean, nobody's covering Ezard, which forces South Dakota State to take the time out. They got a little mixed up with the formation. And that helps Sam Houston because the play clock was winding down and they don't have to use their last time out, 53 seconds to go. Last time, last thing you want to do is leave number 12 uncovered. He'll be dancing in the end zone on you. So third down and eight, Eric Schmidt has been the comeback kid for Sam Houston against North Dakota State with about three and a half to go. He gives his team the lead with that rushing touchdown, then a 20-yarder at the end of the third quarter when Sam Houston was down 27-10 at one point. With that touchdown, they went up 31-27. They added to the lead, ended up winning by three. And here they are down four with 53 seconds left with a third down and eight at the South Dakota State 20. I don't know that I'm going to try to get it all to where it's fourth down and short and live there. And if you do, it'll be a run and a catch, a catch and a run for, for all of it to pick up the first down here. Jefferson is the running back. Third and eight, Schmid the throw. In trouble, moves to his right. Gonna keep it here inside the 20, goes high up into the air. And out of bounds, short of the line to gain by about three yards. And they say that he's in bounds, so the clock is moving. Sam Houston can stop the clock and will with its final timeout with 38 seconds to go. It is. This is what you work for. This is what you spend all those, all the time in the weight room, running sprints, running hills, all the stretching, all the practices, all the film study to get to this point, to win a, a chance to win a national championship. Put it all on the line. Go airborne. Anything you can do 
to will your team to a victory is what you lay on the line right now. All right, take me here to your thoughts on what you do on fourth down and three at the 15-yard line. Runner pass. I'm, I'm going to put the ball in Eric, Eric Smith's hands and move it. I'm not going to leave him stationary in a drop back position. Take advantage of his ability to make plays on the move. He's made good decisions in those situations as well for the most part today. Sam Houston out of timeouts. Boy, I, I really thought Schmidt was out of bounds on that play and that the clock should have stopped and Sam Houston would have been able to keep that timeout. What about that? You know, first down and the game continues. But they're not. Yeah, he's, they're obviously past right. that at this point. So fourth down and three, 38 seconds to go. No timeouts remaining. Got to get to the 12-yard line of South Dakota State. And you got to be quick if you do pick up the, the first down and stay in bounds. They shift Smith into the backfield here. Schmid throws. Ezard slipped, and he still caught it for a first down at the 10-yard line. Got to clock, it. clock it right now. Clock stops to move the chains. It'll restart on the ready for play. It's first and goal. They're going to run a play here. Schmidt to throw from the pocket. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. Going for Schley in the near corner. 24 seconds to go. Second and goal. Sam Houston down four. How about the play to Ezer? Just everybody in the building knows that he's the primary receiver. Just a nice little hitch route. He slips, but still able to make a play when needed to give him the first down. See if they go that way again here. Well, you've got the matchup. It's down here. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Safety help over the top, but that's been one heck of a matchup to watch. Schmidt will throw it again. Fires to the right side and complete going for Schley. Oh, man, I think Ezard was open he in the was. back of the end zone, and he threw it into double, maybe triple coverage. It is third down and goal with 21 seconds left. Yeah, good point. I think he had his mind made up where he was going with the football, but Ezard pops open because Gardner passes him off. They're in zone. You see him open and just kind of pass him off to the coverage, and nobody, the safeties, go racing to the flat. Ezard's wide open. Ezard lined up now in the slot to the left of Eric Schmidt on third and goal with 21 seconds left. Play clock down to five. Schmidt back to throw, fires over the middle, and it is caught! It's a touchdown! A D pulls it in, and Sam Houston has the lead with 16 seconds left. They, they worked the edges of the defense all game long, and sooner or later, a slant, some in-cut route was going to present itself. They waited till the the most important time in the game to go to Adeyi or Ezard to play before, but it was right over the middle of the field. And hey, that's drilling one right there. Stepping into a throw, that's all you got. And he's accurate with it. Excellent throw and a nice catch on the back end to give Sam Houston a lead here with not much time left, just 16 seconds. Morgan on for the point after. He hooks it, no good. So it's 23-21. South Dakota State, though, has a long way to go to get in field goal range. Yeah, they, they do have two timeouts left. How about Schmidt, though, to your point, exhibiting that toughness, all the shots he's taken today, with his third touchdown pass to give his team the lead, and they are 16 ticks away from a championship. Yeah, it, 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 it stings a little bit when you're taking them. But the adrenaline of being in a game, you want, he'll feel it tomorrow. There's no doubt. Maybe tonight when this one's over. But, you know, there's no way you're going to get Eric Schmidt off the field. And he delivers one more time to give his team the lead. Now they got to stop Isaiah Davis on this kickoff return. I go back to Chris Budden's report in the first half where he was over on the sideline after a hit, spitting up blood. But you know how many snaps he missed? Zero. None. None. Tough young man. But to your point, Isaiah Davis, very dangerous. We've seen that often today, an 85-yard rushing touchdown. We'll see if Sam Houston just pops this up rather than kick it deep and let Davis have a crack at it. There is no way Casey Keeler kicks this one deep to, to Isaiah Davis. It might get in his hand somehow by <laughs> you know, lateraling back to him, but 
I put this one just on the ground and roll it around a little bit. And if he does pop it up and you're one of the up men, call for the fair catch. Yeah, save the time. Cameron Hearn is pretty good at this on the pooch kicks, but he's going to kick it deep, oh but it's not to Davis. It's Meacham for South Dakota State. And Meacham's past the 30 and up to about the 38-yard line with 10 seconds to go. So you have a chance maybe to get it to the 45-yard line. You probably have two plays if you go really quickly, definitely one, to give your field goal kicker a chance. Cole Fromm's long is 52 yards. Keep that in mind, which would mean you have to get down to the 35. That might be a stretch to go that far in 10 seconds. Yeah, I think it's two plays because the first will be quick. Something out and on the perimeter quickly, and then you'll have one more opportunity. Two timeouts to go along with it. Beaton Heidi, the quarterback. Got to get rid of it quickly. Does. The catch is made, and it's a pitch. And Yonke to the 47-yard line. Call timeout. They will with five seconds left. So Hines caught it. The hook and lateral to Yonke to about the 46. So again, can you run a quick play to the sideline? Get out of bounds around the 35-40 and give Fromm a chance to win it. Nice job here. And then Jackson Yonke trying to pop that thing open. But Sam Houston there to rally up one play. I don't think there's enough time to get one and, and get out of bounds. To, I think, this I think is you the, go to the 40-yard line. Yeah. And to try to throw anything further than that, I don't know that you're going to have enough time. You're taking a risk here. It's got to be quick because that play took five yeah. seconds. And that went for about you gotta 15 get the, yards. Yeah, you're going to have to get the right look in terms of throwing a hitch route outside to where you got to receive. They're not formationally lined up to even do that. Or you could throw it in the middle of the field, catch it, take a knee right away, and call timeout if you're South Dakota State. That's what they're going to do. No, it's another pitch. Yonke. And now you got to run it out. Yonke's got to go. He's tackled. Sam Houston wins it. The Bearcats capture their first FCS championship. A.C. Keeler becomes the first to win FCS titles at two schools, and he passes Jim Trestle for the most playoff wins in FCS history as Sam Houston, for the third straight week, comes from behind to win the title. <laughs> One fan is, is loving it. What the fuck we do? What a game. What a game. After we got past the weather issues, it turned into a flat out football game going back and forth. And Sam Houston with his third consecutive comeback and major win of the season. The last one obviously being the sweetest because it was for all the marbles. The resilience of this Sam Houston team and Casey Keeler, he's been telling us all week, right? What, what's he been saying? I, I've got a PhD in playoffs. Yes. Well, <laughs> he. <laughs> The guy wins. He wins. He gets his players to believe in what he's selling. We've seen a remarkable turnaround with the Sam Houston program since he took over seven years ago. And on the other sideline, South Dakota State was that close. I was a little surprised that they didn't get to the ground, call timeout, and give their field goal kicker at least a chance. Or, or try the edges. Give me a hitch route on the outside, step out of bounds, and call or call the timeout. But uh, they elected to run the exact same play to the other side, and it didn't work for them. Don't forget the trophy presentation up next on ESPN3. For Chris Button, Andre Ware, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Frisco. We'll see you on ESPN3 for the trophy ceremony. Sam Houston wins its first FCS title 23-21 over South Dakota State. Coming up after the break, ABC World News tonight with David Muir, except on the West Coast.
Coach Keeler, you had rain, you had an hour lightning delay, you had a quarterback spitting up blood at one point. How'd you get it done today? It was only fitting for the season to end this way. I mean, both squads have gone through so much. We knocked their quarterback out early, and they just find a way to you know, get points on the board and keep us off balance. We were doing a lot of guessing because we sort of set a game plan versus their starter, and now with their backup, they sort of changed some things around, and just great coaching job on that side. You know, it was only fitting for us to make a fourth down to win this thing, and... I have great kids. I'm... <laughs> Here they come. Here they come. I have great kids. I was about to say, yeah. you came here seven years ago with a plan to win this. Yep. What does it feel like to do it surrounded by these guys? Well, again, you know, I have to thank our administration, Bobby Williams, Dana Hoyt, now Dr. White. Um, they've given me all the tools I need to win. I have just a, an amazing group of young men around me. It's been an incredible journey. It was only fitting for us to be crowned national champions. Again, I am I'm so proud to be their coach. What has it been like to watch their journey, the players, to bring home a championship for them in the school for the first time? You know, I told them early on, I said, we're the best team in the country. I said, but we need to play that way. And we just kept on working at it and working at it and working at it. And, you know, it goes to these young men. I have a phenomenal coaching staff. I just sort of make sure that we don't muck it up. So I'm so proud to be their coach. And uh, what a great way to end this thing. National champions. Na yeah! National champions! Hello, hello, this is uh, House Mike. Good. Yes, I do. Good job, everybody. Good job, guys. Sam Houston captures its first FCS National Championship, beating South Dakota State 23-21. Eric Schmid with three touchdown passes, this one to a day in the closing seconds as the Bearcats win it by two. Schmid was injured several times, contact injuries, non-contact injuries, but just fought through it and ends up winning the game for Sam Houston. With the kind of intro MOP 23-21 the final score. Let's go down now to Chris Budden. Coach Keeler, you had rain, you had an hour lightning delay, you had a quarterback spitting up blood at one point. How'd you get it done today? It was only fitting for the season to end this way. I mean, both squads have gone through so much. We knocked their quarterback out early, and they just find a way to you know, get points on the board and keep us off balance. We were doing a lot of guessing because we sort of set a game plan versus their starter, and now with their backup, they sort of changed some things around, and just great coaching job on that side. You know, it was only fitting for us to make a fourth down to win this thing, and... I have great kids. I'm... <laughs> Here they come! Here they come! I have great kids. I was about to say, yeah. you came here seven years ago with a plan to win this. Yep. 
what does it feel like to do it surrounded by these guys? Well, again, you know, I have to thank our administration, Bobby Williams, Dana Hoyt, now Dr. White. Um, they've given me all the tools I need to win. I have just a, an amazing group of young men around me. It's been an incredible journey. It was only fitting for us to be crowned national champions. Again, I am I'm so proud to be their coach. What has it been like to watch their journey, the players, to bring home a championship for them in the school for the first time? You know, I told them early on, I said, we're the best team in the country. I said, but we need to play that way. And we just kept on working at it and working at it and working at it. And, you know, it goes to these young men. I have a phenomenal coaching staff. I just sort of make sure that we don't muck it up. So I'm so proud to be their coach. And uh, what a great way to end this thing. National champions. Na yeah! National champions! Andre, your final thoughts on what you saw here today? Just uh, the resiliency of both teams, not not giving up and fighting to the end of this thing. There was certainly a lot of uh, outside distractions with the weather and the delays, but they gave us one heck of a performance once uh, play resumed. Congratulations to Sam Houston. I take my hat off as well to, to South Dakota State and the, the way they came, the way they fought and came back in this ball game, the year that they've had. But uh, the Bearcats, national champions. Let's go back to Chris. Well, I am here with the most valuable player from today's game, Jaquez Ezra. Two touchdowns on the day. Jaquez, you transferred here in hopes of winning a national championship. You had to wait all fall to finally get it done. What's this feeling like right now when you finally do it? It's unbelievable, man. We, we worked for this all year, man. We here, man. We number one, man. Yeah. <laughs> we here, man. I feel good, man. I feel good. What is it about this team that they were able to win it? We persevere, man. We put that work in every day. Every day, man. It's all in, man. We're here. <laughs> every day, man. Every day, man. Coach Keeler is known day, for his speeches. So what did he tell you in that hour rain delay? Hydrate. <laughs> that was his message, hydrate. Time kept going back. We know our mission. We came out. Second half, do what it do, baby. We're here. You already yeah. know. With eight minutes left, all of a sudden I heard the music go on, and they were dancing. They were going crazy. It was like a mosh pit in there. I'm like, you know what? I'm smart enough to let's let them alone. And they came out and played a great second half. You had a great game, but so did your quarterback, who at one point was spitting up blood on the sidelines and walking around, hobbling on his right leg. What can you say about the way that Eric Schmidt played today? We do that for the team, man. We all won, man. One unit, one motion. We all won, man. Let's do it. Congratulations. Here's Kyle Mokes, the FCS committee, to hand you the offensive or the most valuable player trophy award for you. Jaquez Ezer, congratulations. Let's now talk to the coach. Come over, coach. Seven years ago when you came in, you developed a plan. You brought in a strength coach, you brought in a nutritionist, you changed the dyna dynamic of this team to win it. What does it feel like to finally have all of that come to fruition? It, it was humbling losing to James Madison and North Dakota State the way we did. And we had to get it fixed. And I had a great discussion with my athletic director and I said, these are things that I need to do to move forward and win a national championship and he bought in and I have a great administration, and they, they want to win a national championship. You can't do this unless the people around you want to win a national championship. Also want to recognize South Dakota State because you talk about a great performance, knocking out their great freshman quarterback, and they just found a way to persevere. I want to congratulate them for just an amazing season also. Finally for you. They came up, they gave you the Gatorade bath, they, well, they swarmed warned, you. They were warned first. Last time they had a thing of ice in it, hit me in the head, so we oh. made sure no all the ice. ice was out. Yeah. Good deal. Well, you've seen to dry off. The, the tears have dried off a bit, but yeah. what does it feel like now that it's sunk in a little bit? You see the players all wrapped around yeah. you celebrating. We, we, we talked about this last night, that this is immortality. <laughs> For the rest of time, there's going to be a banner in Sam Houston Stadium saying we're the national champions. It's, it's pretty cool. And um, that's what we talked about. That's you're, you're, you have a chance at immortality. Let's go seize that opportunity, and they seized it. Well, you guys earned it. Go celebrate! Congratulations, Sam Houston, on a We're national do a championship. Dancing, absolutely. Yep. Right, go dance! Congratulations.
once again, congratulations to Sam Houston on winning the FCS 